is almost time. The past few hours passing like the lifetime that led them here. The tunnel smells like adrenaline and sweat. The crowd outside roars in their ears like a jet engine. Their pulses racing. Nothing matters right now but ending the wait. The basis human instincts colliding. Pain and love and fear and desire. Can you feel it? The noise is coming down, cleared for takeoff. A wall of sound waiting for the first chord. The building is revving, lurching, wild and limitless. It is time. the game in August and if we said Chris who's going to be in the championship when we get out to Santa Clara probably 95% of the people would have said these two teams these were the two best teams all year it's fitting that they ended up navigating their way through and making it and what I love about this is I think we have a chance to have some point scores and a potential fireworks and a shootout very reminiscent of the first two times these teams got together in the national championship. There are two new faces, though, and they are the quarterbacks. Of course, Trevor Lawrence was in a high school this time a year ago, and Tua Tagovailoa, when they played in the semifinals, was still a week away from his postseason heroics. Now, Tua, of course, he was the Heisman Trophy runner-up. He took over as the starting quarterback throughout the season. He's been absolutely brilliant. He was almost flawless in the Orange Bowl. Look at that young face. His dad drove him hard. Ever Beach, Hawaii. It's kind of a suburb of Honolulu. They turned a righty into a lefty, and he was dominant in high school. Then he cast his lot all the way to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and the family followed him there. That's the family home. There'll be a watch party in the Oahu area, hoping he can add one more trophy to an impressive collection. Yeah, another big trophy. It was such an incredible story last year when he came off the bench at halftime to lead Alabama in a comeback victory over Georgia in overtime with that championship. And now he brings his team back as a starter all year. This is going to be exciting because they have such a balanced attack. They can run the ball or they can throw the ball. It's not just Tua this year that makes this offense dynamic. It's what's around him. He's the ultimate distributor. What will Clemson do? Do they load up to stop the run to give these wide receivers a chance? Or do they sit back and make Alabama be patient? We'll find out here in a few minutes. Yeah, Tua gives them by far the best passing game they've had in these Bama-Clemson oh, yeah. games. But on the other side, Clemson has a retooled offense. They've got firepower. They've had nine straight wins by 20 points because Trevor Lawrence has looked anything but like a true freshman. His journey began in Cartersville, Georgia. It's a small town northwest of Atlanta. He was a 14-year-old freshman high school quarterback playing at a very high level. Just seems to have natural poise and command, the confidence that you just can't coach. The Cartersville Canes were a powerhouse. He won a state title, Kirk. He broke Deshaun Watson's records. They're a Georgia quarterback. I've heard, did pretty well for the Tigers. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people talk about him waiting for him to have that freshman moment where the stage gets too big. We've not seen that yet. I don't expect to see it tonight on this grand stage in the national championship. What I think's big is last year, Alabama completely took away Clemson's ability to throw the ball down the field. With Trevor Lawrence, it's a totally different uh, uh, situation that now Alabama's going to deal with. He can throw it downfield, and if he does, that's where you'll see number nine, Travis Etienne, and the balanced attack that Clemson's had all year on display. But Bama's tough, especially up front at the line of scrimmage. You get the feeling both offensive coaching brain trust like their matchup against the DBs unless that pass rush can affect the quarterback. We've yeah, got to have a shoot. Everything that we've had a chance to not only study on film but talk to the coaches, I think they're both very confident. If they have time to throw, they can make big plays in the passing game. Keep all eyes on Tua and Trevor. They both traveled a long way, literally and figuratively, to be here tonight. In fact, their hometowns just 19 miles right. closer to Ever Beach than Cartersville, Georgia. Isn't that amazing? What are the odds of that, right? And they will hope to lead their teams to a championship. Bama seeks their sixth championship in the last 10 years. That is absolutely incredible. Clemson trying to make it two championships in three years.
almost set for the kickoff here in Santa Clara, but now a special report from Kenny Main brought to you by AT&T. And welcome back to the AT&T pregame showcase. Kickoff temperature 60 degrees, rain not in the forecast. Now, time for the presentation of the colors in our national anthem. Public address announcer, John Magrino. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as our nation's colors are presented by a joint armed forces color guard, including members of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Here to perform our national anthem, accompanied by a flyover from the 9th Reconnaissance Wing, Beale Air Force Base, California, please welcome multi-platinum selling pop artist, Andy Grammer. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled bear. break in the weather was a welcome relief. It's a festive scene. The seats are filled, even though it's a combined 5,000 miles away from these two campuses. Every year it's a spectacle when you get to this point in the season. Doesn't matter where the game is. Doesn't matter who the team, two teams are that get there. And it's no different this year. Let's just get the ball in the air. I'm ready for some football. Neither coach shying away from the mission. Of course, win a game, but also the chance to make history at 15-0. and 0. Never been done in the modern era. It was done in the late 1800s by Penn. And here comes Alabama. They have the longer walk from the locker room to the tunnel. See the paw there. Clemson's logo. That's the target. And it's almost getting knocked over. Saban seeking his seventh championship. Sixth at Bama. Stand alone in the pole era with seven. Saban tries to take the emotion out of the game and get his team to just think about what it takes to be prepared to execute. Hard to do in this scene. Debo Sweeney imploring his guys to ignore the anxiety of the moment and cut loose. Have fun. That model has worked well. The experience, Kirk's incredible. Bama seniors playing in their fourth championship game, eighth playoff game. Comes this guy's almost a season. Tua, making his second playoff start almost flawless against Oklahoma.
two very different approaches from the two quarterbacks as far as their mindset and how they walk into this uh, this game. But both guys have an inner peace. Absolutely. They'll need all of that tonight. Are you ready for round four? Alabama and Clemson. Number 47 is Christian Miller, one of the captains. Keep a close eye on his hamstring. Can he contribute tonight? It's a big question. Is this another cinder block in one of the incredible dynasties we've seen in the history of this great sport? Or can Clemson dethrone the tide, stake their claim as a modern dynasty? Two teams from the southeast travel to the Bay Area to battle for the ultimate prize, led by two superb young quarterbacks. One of those veterans, Christian Wilkins, his final game as a Clemson Tiger. Almost time for the talking to end of the game to begin with the coin toss back to PA announcer John McGreno. Now, please direct your attention to midfield for the national championship game coin toss with electees of the 2019 National Football Foundation College Football Hall of Fame, representing the University of Notre Dame, Ragib Ismael, and representing the University of Mississippi and former 49ers great Patrick Willis. Tonight's referee from the Big Ten Conference, Mike Cannon. Honorary captains for Alabama, D'Amico Ryans, and for Clemson, Deshaun Watson, along with team captains for Alabama and Clemson. Captains, congratulations on your successful seasons and achieving this goal of playing in the national championship game. This is our special coin that we'll be using today. Heads will be the national championship logo. The tails will be Levi's Stadium. Clemson, you've been chosen to call the flip. Heads or tails? He calls heads. I'll let it land on the ground. Tails, Alabama, you win the toss. You want to defer to the second half. Alabama wins the toss, defers to the second half. You want to receive. Where would you like to kick from? Okay, swing around here, please. Exchanging pleasantries almost like old friends. Clemson will receive. Eight seniors get together. Round four. Mount set for it. Let's go to Maria Taylor with Nick Saban. All right, Coach, the third time you tee up against Clemson in the national championship, but a different quarterback on the sideline. The greatest challenge Trevor Lawrence presents to your defense. Well, he's a fine player. He can throw the deep ball well. They've got really good outside players, and a real key to the game to me is how we manage and control and keep those guys cut off. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Now we send it over to Tom. Maria, thank you very much. Dabo, the two best teams in college football, what everybody wanted. Your final message to your team before they took the field. Let's be who we are, man. Let's be who we are. We've, we've worked our tail off really since last January to this point. We've earned the opportunity to be here, dominate this moment. That's what it's all about. Appreciate the time. Good. Thank you. Chris and Herbie, up to you. All right, Tom, thank you. Saban had the choice. Deferred, so he'll put his defense on the field against Trevor Lawrence. Starter. 
since game five of the season. Kelly Bryant, whom he supplanted, transferring away. So he has 90 on his face for his partner, Dexter Lawrence, who's not in this game. They came all this way together as a defensive line for this moment, only to have Dexter Lawrence out the last two games. One of three Tigers suspended for NCAA violation. So Joseph Bullivus, his parents did not want him to play football at all, but he said, maybe I could be a kicker, and he convinced his parents to give it a shot. And he's a freshman, and he'll boot it away. Another true freshman is back deep for the Tigers, Darian Kendrick. Appreciate, don't hate their dominance. That's our advice. Settle in and enjoy the tie to the Tigers for the championship again. Fair catch, and the Tigers will take over at the 25 with their tall, deep-voiced quarterback from the state of Georgia. Trevor Lawrence, 6'5", freshman quarterback from Cartersville, Georgia. He's been a true freshman starter for each of the last three championship games. Steps into this game and has a game plan where they want to try to they want to try to put stress on Alabama's defense by getting the ball thrown downfield, try to work vertically, horizontally, tough sledding in between the tackles against this Alabama defense. Superb against Notre Dame in the semifinal at the Cotton Bowl. Looking to throw in the first play, and it's batted down. Tried to get it to ETN in the flat, and Anfordy Jennings, who does that very well, got a long arm up. Uh, he's one of the best in the country with the long arms to be able to knock the ball down. That's 11 this year. He's been able to get up, time it perfectly, and bat the ball down. By the way, if he didn't get his arm up, there is a lot of room to run there for Travis ETN. They'll go back to that play. And Christian Miller, the senior captain linebacker who injured that hamstring in the semifinal, not in the starting lineup. Can he contribute anything tonight? It's an option look on second down, and ETN gets the pitch, but does not get the edge. He's driven out hard by Mac Wilson and Xavier McKinney. Alabama knows that Clemson, in this scheme, they want to try to outflank you. They want to get the ball on the perimeter. You'll see a lot of quick passes. You'll see a lot of runs to the outside. Part of that, by the way, is to wear down the talented Alabama defensive line. An early third and seven test for the freshman quarterback. Tide rush four. And Lawrence tries to get it to Hunter Renfro, who was well covered by the freshman Sertan. And Clemson goes three and out. Good tight coverage from Alabama. Trying to set a tone here early. Establish some confidence with this defense. And they get the three and out. Good job also there, Chris, by the, by the Clemson offensive line. Giving Trevor Lawrence enough time. Just in that case, Hunter Renfro unable to separate from the freshman Sertan. Great coverage. Bill Spires is the punter. Jalen Waddle, the fastest member of the Crimson Tide team, the freshman receiver, sets up at his 30. Special teams have played an enormous role in the previous three collisions between these teams. It's a good punt from Spires, and Waddle has to retreat and make a fair catch at the 21-yard line. So here comes Tua Tungabailoa and the Crimson Tide offense. Tua Tungo Bailoa, quarterback here at the University of Alabama, 6'1 sophomore from Ever Beach, Hawaii. We still continue to get treatment on that ankle, which was operated on about five weeks ago, Kirk. Telling us so in our meetings, the ankle feels very, very good. And at this point, I think he's almost mentally moved past this. I think it's more now about execution. I've never seen that kind of energy from him in the huddle on the sideline before the team came out for their first possession. It's Irv Smith, the tight end. Alabama gained 50 yards and a strike to Devontae Smith in the first play last week. A more modest goal here. And don't forget, of course, when these two teams have gotten together. Remember O.J. Howard had those big games? I've heard a lot of people this week saying that Irv Smith could be that guy. When you're looking for somebody maybe off the radar that could have a big performance, Irv Smith is definitely a guy that will get his chances. But there is a great deal to deal with for Clemson. It's not just one receiver. It's four or five they've got to account for, including Smith at tight end. After an eight-yard gain, 
Another throw and a catch, and that is Devontae Smith, who made the game-winning catch from two in overtime last year, and they moved the six to the 41. Now, there's an example of the timing and accuracy by Tua. This ball is out, Chris. Watch this. You'll see this ball thrown before Devontae Smith turns. That's, that's incredible. You can't defend that. I don't care who's out there. When you throw the ball on time like that, well before the receiver runs his route and even turns for the ball, impossible to stop. Third throw in three plays. It's intercepted. And the Tigers are going the other way. A.J. Terrell with a pick six. Tua is fooled, Kirk, and the Tigers made him pay. Uh, Clemson brought a blitz. And I think Tua anticipated man-to-man. -man. Isaiah Simmons comes on the blitz. Terrell comes off of his man, and Tua was not expecting that. You know, turnovers are a rarity, and in title games are even more rare. 415 offensive snaps, just the second touchdown, too. says, I'm all right. Watch Terrell, who looks like he's in man-to-man. -man. He comes off of his target. Devontae Smith jumps to Jerry Judy. That's what feel completely fooled Tua. He was expecting man-to-man. -man. Give Terrell all the credit. And Tabo Sweeney is fired up here to be up seven early. Forty-four yard pick six by AJ Terrell and the Tigers strike first for the first time in this four game series against Alabama Kick off by Otter is driven deep and let's go back to that interception Kirk and Chris Let's go back and see the blitz from Isaiah Simmons here once he blitzes you've got a man right here man-to-man -man and man-to-man -man. now what fools him is that Terrell comes off of his man. His eyes are on the quarterback, and instead of staying here, he comes off towards Jerry Judy. So it showed man-to-man, -man, jumped out of it, completely fooled Tua, which you just don't see. And in fact, he came to the sideline telling the fellas, hey, that one's on me, guys. That one's on me. Let's shake it and move forward. Devo Sweeney is hoping for a fast start. He's got one. Damian Harris. Senior running back playing in his eighth playoff game, plows ahead for three. Motion, such a big part of the game early. We were on the field before the game talking with both sides. One of the things that stood out to us is that Davo Sweeney said, beyond talking X's and O's, he talked about the importance of a fast start for Clemson. Just kind of settle in, get themselves to believe that this is going to be another magical night for the Tigers. What a better way to start than a pick six by this defense of Brent Venables. Second down run, and Harris has a crease and shows his strength as he spins free. He'll move the sticks first down to the 38. And every time Damian Harris picks up a run like that, it makes the Clemson defense, especially the safeties, have to respect that. They're going to start to come down and start to be aware of Damian Harris. And if you've watched Alabama this year with Tua, the RPO game has been lethal. We saw it against Oklahoma last year. And when you start to run the ball, safety start to come down, that's when he'll pull it and throw it. Josh Jacobs, who had a monster game against his home state Oklahoma team in the semis, spells Harris, but two is looking to throw. It's a downfield shot. Jerry Judy, the target. He's got it. And the time answer quickly. Two yards for the Bolitnikoff Award winner. That's how you shake up a pick six. No question. That's that's why Tua has such respect by his teammates. Watch in the back right here by the safety. He gets fooled on a double move by Judy. A move in and then by him. Tanner Muse came up, bit on the crossing route that he expected Judy to be going towards. He got completely turned around. The double move in attacking the Clemson safeties results a touchdown. Ugly PAT for Bullivis. This is a nightmare matchup for Clemson. There's no way that 
Big run support safety can guard this guy. Watch him go into the post and then go by him. Well designed by Mike Loxley and this offensive staff. They got Tanner Muse isolated one-on-one -on -one and took advantage of it. Two scores in three minutes, an electric start in Santa Clara. The college football playoff national championship game is presented by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. And in part by Taco Bell's new cravings value menu. Value beyond belief. Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. And the Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar. It is the bar. How do you like to start a round four so far? Hungabailoa hitting Judy for 62 yards. Big plays have been a big feature of these last four championship games. Kirk, now seven touchdown of 50 plus yards in the last four title games. Yeah, the, the big play has been there for this offense all year. They can run it, they can throw it. And I just, I, how about the way Tua responded wow. to the adversity? Came over, tapped himself on the chest saying, that one's on me, comes right back, next throw, touchdown. Here's the boot to Kendrick, he again makes a fair catch. The well, football season is mayhem, and the All-State bus driven by Curtis Wilson, 3,000 miles this year. Over to Santa Clara, what's the All-State mayhem moment you want to highlight today? Well, we got to talk about Clemson, part of the way that they were able to get here. Remember, they lost Kelly Bryant, left the team after Trevor Lawrence was named the starter. Here, a scare against Syracuse at home, 2.50 to go in the game, fourth and six, and the backup, Chase Bryce, hits that to convert, keep their hopes alive. They go down to score with Travis Etienne and pull away 27-23. 13 play 94 yard drive they have been rolling since that close call rice is ready if an emergency arises tonight Clemson with three and out in the first series Lawrence pair of incompletions and he air mails this one way over the head of a 6-4 receiver Justin Ross look keyed up early yeah I, I mentioned RPO game earlier about Alabama in college football you see it in the NFL it's a run pass option Meaning that the quarterback will look at the defense and depending on their coverage, if they're backed off, they're going to hand it off. Put the ball in the belly of the running back and hand it off. If they start to cheat or give you a throw outside, you throw it. And there's the first completion. A flag comes in late. Justin Ross makes that catch. It's in the offensive line pit area. Maybe on Quentin Williams. He, he kind of went, he dove low. And I don't I don't know if they may get him on that or not. There was Travis Etienne in front of the quarterback, but he did submarine and went low on the at, towards uh, Trevor Lawrence. Personal foul, tripping. Offense, okay. number 74. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat, second down. Mike Cannon, Big Ten official in charge of the crew here. John Simpson guilty of the penalty. And they're doing everything they can to slow him down. Ah, that's why, that's why Quentin Williams went low. John Simpson beaten with that quickness of Quentin Williams, a top defense alignment in college football. Maybe one of the best interior linemen we've seen in the last five or ten years in this sport. Game record, isn't it? Sure is. Outland Trophy winners so it negates. Lawrence's first completion makes it second and 22. Ball back at the 12. And short completion as they get it to... Trevian Thompson, the graduate, the old man of the receiving core, along with Renfro. There's an example of what we talked about, that run-pass option, where the, the coverage was 10 yards off the wide receiver Thompson. And Alabama knows that's exactly what Trevor Lawrence is looking at. So they're willing to give him that easy throw in a short game to now set up a third and 14. Alabama, this is where they're known for getting after the quarterback. As always, a tremendous third down defense. Only a three-man rush. Lawrence slips a shot downfield, and he has T. Higgins. Brought down inside the 20. Savion Smith saved a touchdown. The Tigers make their first big play. Now, this is a mental lapse by Alabama. Deontay Thompson using his eyes. He sinks in coverage. Does not get back. And Trevor Lawrence says, thank you very much. I'll split the seam between Smith on one side and Maiden on the other. Mental laps there by Bama. Trevor Lawrence takes advantage on a third and 14. Each team with a 62-yard completion so far. ETN. Shows the explosiveness and still barreling into the end zone. Clemson 
back in front. Hey, man. We said there were going to be some fireworks. <laughs> I didn't expect this. We're not even five minutes into the game. Well, big plays by the running backs have not been a feature for Clemson in the first three minutes. They have struggled, Kirk, to gain even 10 yards. Etienne gives them a spark, though. Yeah, he, he shows you the speed and then the power. The great block, good effort there by Amari Rogers to be able to block Sertan. But a, 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 a read there by Trevor Lawrence to give the ball frees up Etienne. But that drive all about the third and 14 deep ball to T. Higgins. It sets up Travis Etienne's 23rd rushing touchdown of the season. What a start. Now the score here on the ultimate game. Clemson 14-7. Tigers' first five offensive plays were dismal. Then the 62-yard connection to T. Higgins and ETN. The 17-yard touchdown run. To his turn to answer, Kirk. And Jacobs will let it stay there. ETN born with speed, but look at the added strength this year. Yeah, and look how they're using the ability to read the defensive end. This time it's Isaiah Bugs. Get the talented back on the outside, ETN. Big blocks by the freshman Justin Ross. Also, you see Amari Rogers downfield picking up a great block. And for a, a back to get to that next level and score, see the AT&T pylon cam, you've got to be able to get great blocks by the receivers, and they were able to do that to get ETN into the end zone. Ran through the tackle, attempted by Maiden and Shaheem Carter. Three of four start for Tunga Baloa, but it's a first down carry for Jacobs. And they moved the pile seven yards on first down. Of course, Tua hit the big pass where he bounced back after the interception. What, what makes this offense so challenging to defend is, is the balance and how they can come at you in different ways. Brent Venables telling us we've got to take away the running game first. We've got to load up and take our chances and hope we can hold up man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. Two tight ends set for the tide. Play action pitch to Irv Smith. The tight end stopped right there. That was a terrific tackle by Kayvon Wallace, the safety. And when I say Brent Venables says we got to hold up in man-to-man, -man, I don't mean just trying to make interceptions. Here he is matched up right here with Irv Smith. I mean making plays like this out in space. Great job by Kayvon Wallace to be able to come up there against the bigger Irv Smith at 245 pounds and make this play in the open field. Goes down low, gets the left hand there on his ankle to bring him down. Emma's first third down play tonight. We need four. Tigers show pressure and bring it. Let's pick up. Tungabaloa gets it out and throws a strike. Paying a big price is Devontae Smith hit by Terrell. First down, though. Clemson brought the linebacker blitz. They didn't get there. How about Devontae Smith early on that route, jumping to the inside of Terrell. The big hit there by Turner. But it was the perfect route by Turner to get inside. And with the linebackers blitzing, it was a perfect throwing, throwing lane there for Tua to be able to make that throw. And with his accuracy, if you don't get to him, you're going to pay for it on the back end. At 15 to convert on third. A first down throw is slant Smith again. That's the play that has given so many opponents, especially Oklahoma, trouble. And so Brent Venables, first thing we said is obviously the Oklahoma game's on your mind. They did a lot of quick slants on them. How do you stop that? And he talked about leverage. Leverage meaning moving his people inside of those routes and taking away space closing in a little bit tighter with those defensive backs instead of giving them all that space to work their routes. And timeout taken. Charge timeout. Clemson, their first. This will be a 30-second timeout. 
Venables animated with Avon Wallace. You know, he, what we talked about is eliminating that space, getting up tighter, closer to the line of scrimmage. He talked about how Tua has space to work with. He will completely pick you apart. And that's why they called this timeout to remind them you can't back off, guys. You've got to get up in tighter to try to disrupt that timing. Devils really joined in the huddle. Kind of good cop, bad cop there. Focus on what you're doing is what Devo was saying. Two are like very focused since that pick. You talk about Devontae Smith, Kirk, but he made that heroic catch to beat the dogs. That was just his ninth catch last season. He has really emerged this season. Yeah, and he's also healthy now. You know, he, he battled through a hamstring injury through about the middle of the year. The time off before the Orange Bowl really helped him get back to 100%, and we saw that. He had six catches and 104 yards and a touchdown against the Sooners. action on first down. Tua steps up and throws across the middle. It is Smith, the tight end. Busy, his third catch already. He beats Wallace, and they're inside the 20. Watch Irv Smith run his route right here. Watch how athletic he is for a big tight end. He's going up against an undersized Wallace who's trying to stay with him. He made that play a few plays earlier where he made the tackle. But I'll tell you, athletically, Herb Smith is a nightmare to match up with because if you use a smaller guy, he can use his size. But in that case, he uses his quickness. Talking about all pressured and just has to chuck it at the ground. Cleland Furl. ACC's Defensive Player of the Year was in his face, and they're yeah. jawing about it. Pearl's fired up because he's going up against Jonah Williams. I'll tell you what, you want to watch a matchup, a game within the game? Watch this side over here. Jonah Williams, they say, could be a top 15 pick. Pearl, if he decides to come out, could be a first-round pick. He won that battle. We will keep a close eye on that game within the game throughout the night. It's on the left side of the Alabama offensive line with 73 from Bama going up against 99. Two All-Americans going head-to-head. Burrow won the Ted Hendricks Award, best defensive end in the country. Najee Harris, it's a homecoming game for him, and he's got the football running right. And Harris, who's waited a long time and bided his time as part of this rotation, I think he's incredibly inspired tonight, playing just down the road from his Antioch, California home. Boy, that was a big-time block by Wills on the right side, 74. Chris, he went underneath Austin Bryant, got up, got him up in the air, and put him on his back. And that's what opened it up there for Najee Harris to have some room to run. That's sending a message by the right tackle. Two back look now. Third and less than a yard. Harris, first down. Number one running back recruit in the country a couple of years ago. Hasn't gotten the touches he'd hoped for. I, you could almost see his frustration boiling over. Yeah, I think throughout the year, he's been a little anxious. And we all know in Tuscaloosa, when it comes to that position, they've had a, a pretty good uh, string of backs. And when you're an underclassman, sometimes you got to sit behind Damian Harris and guys like Josh Jacobs. A lot of times they had to sit behind some very talented backs. He will more than likely be the feature guy next year, but you're right. He's back home. A lot of people here to see him play. You know he is fired up to have a chance to make big plays. He's got it again. Hesitates. Makes a cut. Lowers the shoulder. Stretches for the goal line. Touchdown! Harris in his homecoming game. See if he got the ball across before he hit the ground. Tremendous job to stretch out. I don't know. Oh, and regardless, what an effort. What an effort. He goes over. He just is able to extend that. Mullen, Trayvon Mullen. No, I think you're right, Chris. He, he's going to be a little bit short of the, of the goal line. Anything other than the hand and foot touches, he's down. Looks like his right thigh. Gives you a good look at it. Yeah. Watch his right thigh where it touches and then watch the ball. There. Yeah, he's and a short. left eye actually is down first. So I believe that the Big Ten replay crew will reverse the call. The ruling but you're on the right previous play the was effort. a touchdown. The play is under further review. You know, I just had a sense that they were going to give him a chance. He was going to be extra inspired tonight, Kirk. And you know, it's up, just up 680 to Antioch, the East Bay. And whether or not it, a touchdown counts, he's you, cranked up early. You said on the our bus before we came out of the last thing you said before we came out of the field was that's something to keep an eye on. And you're, you're right about the energy and the passion of being back home and 
been a bit frustrated, and what better way for him to go out? Remember in the Georgia game last year in the championship, they gave him some opportunities, and he stepped up and made some big-time runs. Yeah, he had 64 yards rushing in that win over the Dogs. He was the leading rusher, and all of them came late. I'll tell you one thing that I'm taking away, not only the great effort by, by Najee Harris. This is a really good look. Left leg down. Dave Kataya is our rules expert here, David. It seems pretty clear cut what they're looking for. I agree with you, Chris. The rule is anything other than hand to foot, as you mentioned earlier, looks like that bottom leg is down and you can see the ball short. I have this as short in my opinion. But again, you just you just celebrate the effort. The freeze trim, I think, will lead them to conclude the ball is about a football length away from the goal line. I tell you, the, the, the thing that stood out to me on the, the sequence of plays is the right side of the Alabama offensive line really asserting themselves and getting a great push to give Najee Harris some room to run on about three or four plays. After review, the runner was down at the half goal yard line. The ball will be placed on the half yard line. It will be second down and goal. The clock will start on the ready for play. Well, a smile from Harris, even though his touchdown is taken off the board. He's done the hard work to put the tide in position to get back even in this frenetic and incredibly fun first quarter. You mentioned you got to bide your time because there's so many talented backs. It's a far cry from when Derrick Henry, the Heisman winner, was the workhorse against the Tigers in that championship game. It's Damian Harris. A fake it to him, to a rolling out and flips it to a wide open Hale Henches touchdown tied. They got a lot of options on the goal line, don't they? Yeah. They overloaded the right side. They, they put everybody on the right side. The tight end is lined up here because they overload the right side. He sneaks and ends up getting out of the flat. Wide open. Clemson not expecting that with it with the tackle over. Overload that right side. Everybody's thinking you're gonna run the football. Great great time to come back with a play action look the other way. Ooh! It's off the upright and no good. And Alabama has missed a PAT for the ninth time. They miss more PATs and field goals than any team in college football. So the freshman doinks it. And Clemson retains a one-point lead. We're back after these messages. You're watching the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. For any kicker, just like a golfer, tension can lead to loss of technique. Bulovis has six of those nine missed PATs. A lot of scoring so far, Kirk. You wonder, will the football gods make that one extra point doink play a role tonight? Bulovis is also the kickoff man. And Kendrick will make another fair catch. You know, last year with Kelly Bryant at quarterback, Clemson couldn't get the ball thrown downfield. In fact, of passes thrown 15 yards or longer downfield, they were 0 for 4. Now, Alabama didn't respect that part of their game. It's a different deal this year. This was part of Trevor Lawrence emerging as the guy, is now you can make those throws downfield. And Alabama has to respect the vertical passing game. And when you have to respect the vertical passing game, it can open up the running game. They work hand in hand together in this system. Yeah, Higgins' catch was incredibly the 22nd play of 50 plus yards by Clemson this season. They fake it to Etienne. Lawrence, good thrower on the run, but that's broken up beautifully by McKinney on the sidelines. That, that is great quickness there by Xavier McKinney. Keep in mind, Alabama this year lost their top six defensive backs. They lost their defensive coordinator, Jeremy Pruitt, who became the head coach at Tennessee. They were basically starting over on the back end. And Tosh Lapoy and Nick Saban doing a very good job with this young, very talented group that just got better and better as the year has gone on. They've targeted Renfro twice through incompletions. And now ETN is going to be wrapped up and knocked down by Big Quinn and Williams and company for a loss. Well, if you're going to pull linemen and you're dealing with 92, you better be prepared because he senses it and he's got quickness to be able to shoot through gaps. Look how he's able to get into the backfield. The combination 
of great strength and incredible first step quickness. But I also would throw on top of that his instincts. He sees the game like a linebacker. Absolutely. He's an exercise science major. He says, I know the human body very well. I know all the little signs to look for in the offensive line. The complete skill set. On third and 14, does Lawrence have more magic? No. Incomplete. They've tried now three times to get to Renfro, who's got those four touchdowns against the tide in his career. McKinney in coverage there. Uh, the, the Clemson sidelines, a little frustrated, talking to the official, Xavier McKinney, getting physical there with Hunter Renfro, just kind of shoving him into the sideline before the ball is in the air. It was Minka Fitzpatrick who made it his mission a year ago in the semi to take away Hunter Renfro, and they did in large part. Caught five passes, but not big plays. Of course, he haunted the Tide in the two championship games. The game winner from Watson. So, Bama to get the ball back down one. Waddle standing at his 37. Spires rolls and kicks it rugby style short. And Waddle on the hop, a dangerous play in traffic, but it works as he scoots near midfield. Pretty bold. Very bold. Now tomorrow on ESPN, the first Super Tuesday College Hoops doubleheader of the year. Zion Williamson and the top-ranked basketball team in the country. Duke taking on Wake Forest at 7 Eastern. Duke just getting by Clemson the other night. Then the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack from Raleigh. Both games also in the ESPN app, so you can watch them anywhere. Now, Bam has been running the football. Najee Harris in there. It's a good time for them to set up some shots and try to go downfield. Those safeties now aware of Harris in the running game. And good call. They pitch it to Judy, who's going to be knocked out of bounds by Trayvon Mullen, but it's a first down. To Maria Taylor. Well, guys, Tua was getting a little bit of attention on the sideline. He came off complaining about some pain in his right hand, and they got some tape out and wrapped it up a little bit. Dr. Lyle King took a look at it. He's the same surgeon that performed his ankle surgery and head football athletic trainer Jeff Allen before he went back out on the field. Good thing he's a lefty. He's a natu actually a natural righty, but his dad said, oh, you're going to throw the football with your left hand. Works out well. And Najee Harris in the secondary again. And the inspired Californian first down at the 26. Yeah. Liam Pearl on a stunt came down, almost had a chance, but just got an arm on Najee Harris. You're not going to bring Najee Harris down with just an arm. Clemson likes to twist and, and slant and angle their D linemen, and that time 99 almost had a chance to come down and make a play, but unable to because of that power. Tied running game is churning. 13 on that carry. Tigers crowd the line and bring the heat. It's picked up, and Tua delivers. Fingertip catch across the middle. Beautifully caught there by Judy. It's another first down. Now the middle of this field right now is open, bringing a blitz right here. And because of that blitz, look at the middle of that field and the, the effort here to be able to make that catch. Fingertip catch by Jerry Judy, who won the Bolitnikoff as that top receiver in the country. Both linebackers shot their gaps. Najee Harris picked up the blitz, and Tua had just enough time to get that ball thrown to Judy. Since that interception, he's been almost flawless. Damian Harris running right. It's downhill in a hurry, doesn't he, inside the 10. Tua goes to the line of scrimmage when they get down in this red zone. And if you're going to keep your safeties back, they're going to run the football, especially the way this offensive line right now is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. They're almost forcing Clemson to bring Tanner Muse and Kayvon Wallace and Isaiah Simmons up into the box, which would create one-on-one -on -one coverage, which is exactly what Tua wants in a pass game. Strength on strength. Tigers are a tremendous red zone defense. Tied very hard to stop down here. Damian Harris tried to go wide, had to cut it back very quickly as Trey Lamar was in his path. It'll be third down. You know, Brent Venables will not go away from what his identity is, which is being attacking. They, they, they're an aggressive defense. They lead the nation in sacks, second the nation in tackles for loss. They believe in trying to get to the other side of the line of scrimmage, which means 
you got to blitz those linebackers and safeties a lot. That time Trey, Trey Lamar had an impact on that play. Need three on third down. Rugs in motion, but they hand it to Harris, who bumps into traffic. Actually ran into his blockers, and he's going to be just short, and it's a fourth down decision for Saban. Well, you would think early in this game, great field position, kicking game, not the best. You've got to think there's going to be a lot of scoring back and forth. By the way, Albert Huggins makes the play there. You talked about how he ran to the back of one of his own players. It's Albert Huggins holding the point there. Albert Huggins in for Dexter Lawrence. Yeah, big shoes to fill. His teammates confident he could step up and handle it. This is where you got to shoot a gap, Chris. The only chance to stop him is you got to hit a gap with a blitz. Who is out wide? Yep. Jacobs in Wildcat formation. Low snap. And he will make the first down and fight to the one. He had to show good hands to avoid a disastrous play. He sure did. Bobbled it a little bit. Snap a little bit low. But a great athlete and great toughness. We've seen that throughout this year. You saw it last week in the Orange Bowl against Oklahoma. That second and third effort almost gets him to the end zone and good effort there by Hale Henches to open that up. The Tigers spent a lot of practice time preparing for that, but it's so difficult to stop. Damian driving, but doesn't get there. Stopped at the half yard line. And it's a battle right now. You got future NFL talent all over the place in that Bama offensive line. Jonah Williams, Pierce Baker, the guy making his 57 start, Leland Farrell, Wilkins in there, number 42. They've been having a lot of success on the right side, the offensive line. Six offensive linemen. Tackle over again to the right side. And a whistle. And a false start by the tie. They tried to get a little tricky down there, and it cost them. False start. Offense. 74. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Alex Leatherwood. Again, Kirk, so many options down close. They, they, they kind of outbox themselves against Oklahoma down here. Today. Right. See the tight end right here? You got all the, the manpower over here with the tackle over. They put the tight end to the left. They threw the touchdown pass out of that formation earlier, but they, they clearly came up with a, a, a kind of a change up, break a tendency or two, try to throw Clemson off with that formation they've used a couple times. Yeah, there's the tape. Maria talked about to his right hand. He ripped that stuff off. Second and goal. It's his wide receiver screen to the speedy Henry Ruggs with the sophomore knocked down at the fourth very nicely by Isaiah Simmons. Good job by Clemson getting off of blocks. Isaiah Simmons. Also, you saw Kayvon Wallace getting off of that block. I thought he may have a chance to spring and get into the end zone, but not only good athletic ability on the back end, physicality to be able to get off the blocks. Big third down here. Seconds ticking away in a very entertaining opening quarter. So far, the missed PAT by Bullivis is the difference. 14-13, Clemson with the tide, threatening on third and goal when we begin the second quarter. Lawrence and Tua, as advertised. 14-13, Tigers. And now, they send it to a special report from Kenny Maine, brought to you by AT&T. Presented by AT&T, tied on the doorstep with a third and goal to begin the quarter. And they move at the end of the quarter into the Clemson side of the field. Because you can see in the first quarter, only 10 plays for Clemson. The reason that's important, Clemson wants to try to tire Alabama out. They need a lot more plays and a lot more time of possession. Damian Harris is the back. It's rugs in motion to a rolling shovel pass and the Tigers sniffed it out. Austin Bryant drops Harris for a loss. And here comes the field goal team. Now that's having a man on a man. Trey Lamar on the blitz takes the quarterback and you'll see Austin Bryant right here settle and make the play on Damian Harris. See the late blitz there, they disguise it. Trey Lamar takes Tua. They try to catch Clemson napping, but this is where the experience and the veterans up front for Clemson payoff. Great job by Austin Bryant, the senior. 
So Bulibus, who had the PAT miss, out for the field goal, hasn't missed since mid October. And has been automatic inside of 40, and nothing feels automatic tonight. You slide that one in. Automatic. <laughs> Tide stopped at the doorstep. We talked about how tough it is to score on Clemson down there in the red zone. But the false start penalty, Kirk, when Bama was getting a little cute down there, ends up costing him four points. Yeah, it ended up costing him, but it, it also worked for him. with that same formation when they went with the play action. I, you know, th this game now, it's just you, you settle in. You got a quarter behind you, and now you got to go out and execute. If you think about Clemson and their numbers, they hit that 62-yard pass. Other than that, look, 86 yards total offense, two three and outs. And Lawrence right now is not able to really have a chance to get things going. Long way to go. But for them, I think a big part of it was very similar to Deshaun Watson when they beat him. They ran 99 plays. Everybody talked about how Alabama tired out in the second half. But well, when you run 10 plays in a quarter, that's not going to do it. We knew it would be a lot different than last year, Kirk. Bama gained a total of 264 against the Tigers in the semifinal win. So very different approach. 224 in the first quarter. Yep. That was a victory for the Tigers goal line defense. And Bullivis with another mistake. It's an ugly kick and Thompson will take over at the 35 yard line. It's a rough start for the kicker. Now it's time to go from plan to play brought to you by Northwestern Mutual and the incredible accomplishments of two of the most successful senior classes in FBS history. Bama number one. If Clemson can win tonight, each class would finish their careers with 55 wins and two national championships. Incredible. Incredible accomplishments. Clemson's case of the defense alignment. Many thought last year they would head off to the NFL. Instead, collectively, they decided to come back and try to chase a championship. And what more can you say about Nick Saban? Seems like every senior class you talk about is breaking some kind of record from the previous class uh, the year before them. Both coaches said, we're going to be better next year. So look out, world. Neither team going anywhere. Tavian Feaster is the back now, but Lawrence is looking to throw the ball, and a flag comes in. Yeah. And it was Savion Smith defending on Higgins. And got, got very handy there by Savion Smith. It's a good matchup back into the boundary with T. Higgins, who has great size at 6'4. Defense, number four. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. You see his leverage initially. He kind of jumped to the outside. He wanted to take away that outside in case he's going to run that, that deep ball. He's going to be stride for stride. And then he cuts out, and that's when he grabbed onto the jersey. Good call by the official. Last possession. Dabo lobbied for the call. Then he gets it. By the way, look at Alabama's coverage. Look how tight they are. Almost daring Trevor Lawrence to throw behind him. Now they back off up top. Feaster in the flat. Gets a block. Gets another block. And spins down inside the 25 as the junior from South Carolina makes a big play. Alabama plays a lot of man-to-man. -man. Mac Wilson ma matched up with Feaster, trying to get out there, but the block right there and a good move by Feaster. There's no one else left to make the tackle other than Mac Wilson. Playing with some tempo after the big gain, and Lawrence, he's a willing runner. He takes a big shot right there, hit by Dylan Moses. And that's Trevor Lawrence's been approached all year. Clemson at times so kind of lull you to sleep because they struggle. They struggle and then they hit that big play and that's what they're going to have to do. There's Mac Wilson and those two linebackers, Dylan Moses, making a play for a short gain for Clemson. Yeah, excuse me, it was it was Moses down low and that, that could have been called for a helmet to helmet targeting. It wasn't. Just a one yard gain and he paid the price. Now Feaster. Leaves his way through heavy traffic inside the 20. It'll be third and five. Much like the other side of the ball, we were talking at the break. Which defense can make a difference? Which defense can get into the backfield? See Alabama now. You see Quinnen Williams in the middle, hands on his hips. Isaiah Bugs, hands on his hips. Not a lot of depth up front with that Alabama defensive line. In fact, you will not see them rotate hardly anybody tonight. And those longer drives become tougher for the big boys up front. Lawrence, 85, has time, backpedals, and fires to Higgins across the middle. First down, 
And a first and goal down near the five. Uh, some confusion here. Alabama's playing man-to-man -man on one side. But watch watch this matchup right here. Savion Smith kind of gives up on it. He's confused. Everybody else is covering their man, man-to-man. -man. Savion Smith started to, and then he kind of looked around. Watch him. Am I in zone? Am I a man? He lets T. Higgins go. And good recognition there by Trevor Lawrence to find him and make the throw for the first down. Tigers sure to try to convert in the red zone. ETN. Bites down near the goal line. They tried to push him from behind. The old lineman helping him along. He's just short. You talk about how he's changed from last year as a true freshman who was just fast to who he is this year. Look at this toughness. Look at the strength that he has in his lower body. Travis Etienne is no longer just one of the most explosive backs. He is now a power back. He ran right in to the middle linebacker, Mac Wilson. Tigers make a statement as Etienne walks in, stretching the lead. Six plays, 65 yards. It's more like Clemson right there. They've got to be happy with that drive. And Travis Etienne, he is, he is not, if anything, he's accelerating through that hole. It's a good job by the left side of that offensive line, opening things up and making it easy for him to get into the end zone. Big Justin Faustinelli, the graduate, excellent scholar athlete, the center making a block there. Back and forth, Clemson's offense scores for the second time. And they're back in front. Even beautiful nights of flying for the Goodyear Blimp, one of our 17 mega cast presentations. There's L. Duncan and Matt Berry live from on board the Wingfoot 2. Blimpcast is on the ESPN app. Looks like Clemson back on top, 21 16. Alabama Kirk had gone 38 straight games without allowing 21 points in the first half. Now they've done it two of the last three. Georgia, the SEC championship game, and tonight. And it's a touchback. Well, while we're focused a lot on Tua in the passing game, he's 12 of 14. I think it's being started because of the way they can run the ball. Look at this offensive line tonight doing a really good job. They're averaging 5.6 yards a carry. Watch this on the far right. Boom. What a block there to open it up by Wills against Austin Bryant. And when you can get up to the linebackers against this attacking defense, and you can be a threat as a team that can run the ball, that opens up the playbook for Mike Loxley and how Tua can attack because the safeties and linebackers have to respect the ability to run the football. Actually, of course, part of that coordinator carousel under Saban off to Maryland as the head coach next season. Jacobs makes a man miss. A little stutter step in the hole as he got past Kendall Joseph. Or, excuse me, Nolan Turner there in the missed tackle. Sam Rinaldi. Chris, to pick up on what Kirk said, keep an eye on the defensive fatigue already setting in on that Clemson front. Nearly every lineman sitting down and drawing oxygen in the second quarter after the last series coming off the field, being encouraged, don't stand up, continue to rest. Time of possession needs to swing here a little more in favor of Clemson. Two points on the 28th play tonight, and Bama has run a far cry from the Dominant performance against Notre Dame in the semifinal. We were well rested in that game. And it's Jacobs who's cut down after a short game. It'll be third in about a yard and a half. Yeah, that's a nice job by Nolan Turner coming down to fill in. And Alabama just keeps rotating backs. We've seen Najee Harris, Damian Harris, Josh Jacobs. Allows them to stay fresh. They're playing fast on this third down, but Jacobs is not going to get there. Good penetration by that Tigers defensive front, including backup Niles Pinckney helping out Cleveland Furl. It's fourth down. Yeah, they do a nice job in the inside, but Chris, look on the outside. They're, they're coming around with a true freshman. Xavier Thomas does a good job of getting in there, too. Saban, he's, he's decided, wow, this is interesting. Nick Saban sensing the feel of the game in his own 35 going for it here at least initially looking like he was going to go for this 
This is out of respect for Clemson's offense for sure and his own defensive struggles in mind. Jacobs, a fourth down gamble by Saban, and it pays off as Jacobs has to earn the first down. How about that call, Parker? If you haven't watched a lot of college football this year and you tuned into the national championship, that should tell you where the sport is in 2019, that Nick Saban is going for it on fourth down and about six inches from his own 35-yard line. That's like Bill Belichick doing that from his own 35-yard line. J.D. Davis had him, but Jacob broke that tackle. And Jacobs, big man, last week against the Sooners, running hard for eight more. And that's one of those decisions, if they end up going down and scoring, you put an asterisk by and remember that decision by Nick Saban. Remember the onside yes. kick when he felt like his defense couldn't stop the Tigers. Absolutely. And he already, I think, is sensing here with nine minutes to go in the second quarter. This is going to be one of those games. It's a back and forth. Every possession counts. And he's confident in his guys to pick up that first down, even though it was deep in his own territory. An offensive line can feed off of that when the coach shows faith in you. Jacobs makes a nice cut. Another cut slipped down at the 44, but Josh running hard. Terrell had the pick six. He whiffed on this one. You know, Travis Etienne, I've said before, could be the most talented back in the country. You can make a really strong case for Josh Jacobs being in that discussion, too. They are loaded in this backfield in, in Tuscaloosa. Look at the moves. The, the, the change of direction, low center of gravity. He is a complete back and will be playing on Sundays for a long, long time. He was not a heavily touted recruit out of Oklahoma when the Tide signed him. Tua looking to throw and first down. Launches it for Judy, but it's picked off. The second interception. This is Trayvon Mullen. And Mullen getting some blocks and still going. Tight roping out near midfield as Tua is picked off for the second time. You know, he has such confidence in his ability that sometimes I think he becomes, he, he, he has such confidence that he thinks his guys are going to make a play. The safety this time fools him. Wallace was sitting on the hash. He thought he had man-to-man. -man. Instead, Mullen drops back. He threw the ball before he even looked at the coverage. He anticipated the coverage. He didn't read the coverage. And because of that, he just threw it, thinking his man's going to make a play. And instead, Clemson baits him and picks him off for the second time. And Deshaun Watson, honorary captain tonight. He split his two appearances as the Tigers quarterback has ends the title. He likes that one. Now, does Dabo Sweeney, Jeff Scott, Tony Elliott, do they go after Alabama right away? Do they look for a big play here? ETN wrestled down by Quentin Williams after a short game. History suggests at this point of the field with a five-point lead, they might take a risk. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a quick change and you have a chance to get a big return, you're in plus territory. Why not take a chance if they give you the right coverage? Trevor Lawrence has the arm. He's got receivers that can make plays on both sides. He's got Justin Ross against Sertan, who was picked on earlier and picked on frequently by Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl to the right of the formation. Lawrence is looking in the other direction, and a low throw. Renfro goes down and makes the catch, so it's 43 straight games with a catch for the man who's finally concluding his Tigers career tonight. A great job of getting his hands down low. You see the nose of the ball down. That's a tough ball to catch. But if anybody can come up with it, it's Hunter Renfro, who's had a great career when he's had chances to go up against Alabama. And that gives him a much better chance here now on third and two. 24th career catch by Renfro against the Crimson Tide. Lawrence trying to throw for it, and it's Renfro again. He's such a reliable weapon on third down. They move the six inside the 35. And Dylan Moses looked confused there based on he, him seeing trips into the sideline. He's looking around at the defense, even to the sideline, wondering what he should do. And Trevor Lawrence ends up throwing the ball right there.
Lawrence across the middle. Broken up beautifully. Getting a hand out there was Sertan, the long arm freshman from Plantation, Florida. Go back to that previous play. It's been something that's bothered Alabama a lot this year as you see the motion watch Dylan Moses see him looking around wants to make sure everybody's on the same page he's looking to the sideline ball is snapped bang they go right there take advantage of that confusion they're giving them different formations making them adjust making Alabama's defense have to communicate starting guard John Simpson had his helmet taken off he's out for the play Fabian Feaster is the back on second and ten And they try to get it to him in the flat. Ball tipped up in the air. He makes the catch on the carom. Jennings again got his arm on it. And how about that play? Unorthodox, but a heck of a play by Jennings with the left hand, the backhand. Goes up in the air. He's thinking about trying to make the play, but Feaster stays focused on the ball before Bugs or anybody else can come up with an interception. But great awareness again by Anthony Jennings. Man who missed the national championship game a year ago with a grizzly knee injury. Missed all the playoff games. Third and seven. Tied. Try to heat up the pocket. But it's a catch across the middle by Amari Rogers. And he's wrestled down inside the five. The first catch for Rogers. Boy, I love how Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence climbs the pocket against this defense. Watch him climb up into the pocket and then throw an absolute rope to Amari Rodgers. Great technique there by the true freshman quarterback showing poise on that third down for Clemson. 25-yard gain. And the Tigers muscle it in for a second time with a first and goal. It's ETN again, this time nothing doing. Deontay Thompson, the safety, came around the corner. I would think that Clemson's offensive staff upstairs, up here at our view, looking down. Keep in mind, Trevor Lawrence is an athletic quarterback. 6'6", 215. He's not run the ball yet tonight. But down here, the fact that Alabama's not respecting him in that run game, wouldn't be afraid to put that zone read and pull it and keep it. Has just the one touchdown run this season. It's a shovel pass in the middle. And battling his way to the end zone. ETN for a second time. Tigers on fire. Go back to the interception. Trey Mullen makes the interception. Lawrence gets the ball back, eight plays, 47 yards, and a chance to come up with a touchdown. And what a call by Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott. Jennings tried to rip at that ball, but there's the strength by ETN to hold on to it. And this tie defense getting gashed. You go back to the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma scored six of their last seven possessions. The one they didn't score, Kyler Mir ran out of time. And the Tigers are feasting early on tonight. Exactly, and here's that interception by Trayvon Mullen. Makes the big play. Second interception of the night for this Clemson defense. Gave the ball back to Trevor Lawrence. Each cornerback has a pick. And on the shovel pass, ETN has his second touchdown. The lead is a dozen. The College Football Playoff National Championship Game, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by the all-new Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever, Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel, and Samsung QLED TV, the official TV sponsor of the College Football Playoff. 438 until halftime. Imagine Dragons will take the stage, a special halftime performance. We'll also take you behind the scenes of Marvel Studios' new movie, Captain Marvel, in theaters March 8th. Treasure Island is where the concert is. Oops. Getting ready for some music, watching some exciting football. Look at the playoffs, Kirk. Tua has six touchdowns in the two games and a total of six incompletions. But the two of them have been completed to the other guys tonight. Yeah. And those two interceptions. The result of 14 of Clemson's 28 points. 
two rushing touchdowns for ETN and one receiving. So the hat trick for the talented young tailback. And Tua's got something else to shake off. Back to work after this break. Season to the CFP by creating the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Pick it up the tab for 500 students from each school. And the Clubs and Faithful enjoying their long journey. It's the team's first game in California in 52 years. They played the Trojans at the Coliseum. They played Pacific back in 51, just the third ever California visit. Damian Harris and the Tide find themselves down a dozen. As Trevor Lawrence has outplayed Tua so far, avoided the big mistakes. And there's the throw and a catch on the far side there. Brought down immediately is Judy. Important for Tua to get back into his rhythm. He was full. Clemson showed cover two. He thought he had a space for about where that 30 is. Instead, look at the corner dropping. The corner drops when he thought the corner would stay up tight. Sitting in that flat area. Second time, Brent Venable shows one look, goes to another after the snap, mixing up those coverages and, and fooled Tua for the second time. Harris, Najee Harris makes a cut, and it's a first down. Not just picks by Terrell and Mullen, but a lot of action after the pick. Returns of 44 for a touchdown and 46 to set up the touchdown drive. Yeah, great point. As we said, 14 points on both those interceptions. You look at the score right now, 28 to 16. That has a lot to do with Clemson's lead. But this is what makes Tua Tua. You would expect him to stay poised and continue to play at the level he's played all year. Najee Harris tries to bounce it, but he cannot escape the rangy safety, Isaiah Simmons. But Trey Lamar makes the play right here, and it forces Harris to have to bounce. They continue to blitz these linebackers. He gets penetration, and because of that penetration, it forces Najee Harris out wide. And there's Isaiah Simmons, an outside linebacker slash nickel, who's a great player at 6'2", 230 pounds. Yeah, I call him a safety. He's actually a backer, but he can play anywhere. A tough tackler on this defense. Now it's second and 14. A run to Najee Harris. And he's hammered down at the 45. It sets up a third and six. And I always wonder what goes into Mike Loxley and the offensive staff. You know, you got three great backs in Najee Harris, Harris and Josh Jacobs, Damian Harris. And they continue to kind of rotate him, try to go with the hot hand. Mike Loxley is a, a great, he's the beneficiary this year of great offensive skill, but a great offensive mind. As you said, Chris, headed to Maryland. It's a big third down for him. Tied two for five so far on third. Need six. Clemson crowding the line, but they back out. Now late pressure, and Tugabello is hammered. Trayvon Mullen, who just had the pick, gets home on a blitz. And she was slow to get up. Chris, they disguise this. Mullen showing coverage. You'll see him start to sneak in and then end up coming in late after the motion. Watch one late. Tua never gets his eyes out. Mullen ends up coming. Nobody picks him up. The back didn't recognize it to pick it up. Tua didn't see it. Well timed by Mullen. Venables knew he'd have to disguise those looks. That ball looks like it came out. Yeah, Pierce Baker very astutely jumped on it to avoid a third turnover by Tua. But the Tigers will get the ball back by 12. Bama's first punt of the night coming up. And halftime after the Imagine Dragons perform. Stay tuned for the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Tua right now out of sorts a bit. Right? Not seeing that blitz and you know, that that ball ended up being a fumble as they called on the field. I, I thought his knee was down in live action, but you could tell in the replay that the ball came out. You know, he, if he sees this blitz and recognizes this, Chris, he's able to dump it out to Najee Harris who's slipping out of the backfield. In fact, Najee Harris wants the ball to come his way. If, if Tua would have kept his eyes on that blitz, he's looking right. Najee Harris to the top left. He's jumping up and down, wanting the ball. So their answer to that blitz is immediately throw the ball right there, right now, if you recognize it. He never saw it. 
And, and this is a quarterback that hasn't made mistakes like this. So it's partly Tua, but also it's Brent Venables in this Clemson defense that's creating these opportunities. They're fooling him right now. So it's Lawrence and the Tigers back to work. ETN, three touchdowns already to his left. 2.04 before halftime. Bama will get the football to begin the second half. Lawrence from the pocket. Long throw. You see the arm strength. That's Trevion Thompson out near the 40. Two things. Number one, recognizes it's cover two. Goes right over top of Smith, the corner who's sitting up, top, up close, up in the flat. He goes right over top of him, showing that arm strength. And in front of the safety and puts it there to the senior Thompson. He's played more games of wide receiver than any Tiger ever. Good protection in the pocket. Another long throw, but it's too long. It's into the Alabama bench. I want you to keep in mind in his first half, this kid, Trevor Lawrence, is a true freshman. Look at the composure. Yeah, he's 6'6", 215, ridiculous physical skills. This is what he did at Cartersville High School. Had an incredible career. He started four years. And I think that experience, imagine starting as a 14-year-old in a, in a high school, pr the pressure of Georgia high school football. I think those experiences at Cartersville allowed him to step in as a true freshman. And, and the game is not too big for him. For a 19-year-old in October. He's eight, eight, eight of his last ten now. Looks like he's born to do this. And they had to leave before halftime. Well, time was running now. There was a rare moment of confusion, and Lawrence calls a timeout. Lawrence family nurturing him, Amanda and Jeremy. Not applying heavy pressure. They were tough on him, and they were tough on him in school, tough on him as an athlete. But he was grateful for that. He told me that it helped forge him as a person and a player. He has arrived at Clemson ahead of even where Deshaun Watson was when he arrived. You know, I, I just look at that position around college football anymore, and I, and I think the, the development with the quarterback coaches, the pressure that these guys are under with the Elite 11 programs, they travel all over the country, they're in camps. He had a great high school coach at Joey King at Cartersville High School. They've got a great relationship, and Joey King worked hard with him on understanding formations and coverages and they would tell you that that had as much to do with his development and showing up at Clemson ready to play as much as anything. Graduate student Adam Choice is the back on this second and ten. And Lawrence stands and fires and this tied defense doesn't know what to do. There's a hit out of bounds by McKinney on Justin Ross. This should add 15 yards to the play. There's that frustration. We saw a little bit of that when we went to a break. McKinney and one of his teammates, Shaheem Carter, kind of going over maybe a previous possession on the sideline, kind of just Dead ball. competitively. Personal foul. They hit out of bounds. Defense number 15. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. You can see Saban and Tosh LaCoy's defense. They're rattled right now. Yeah, it, I, I think... Uh, we talked about some of the emotion carrying over now in the field. He's frustrated that Ross, another freshman, beat him and clearly hits him late, and they throw another 15 on in the back end of that play. You mentioned how McKinney was so animated, so angry in the previous timeout of this game, and he, he's got to calm himself down. Choice is the back. Ball moved to the 33. Tied, jumped offside. Lawrence has got a free play. Fires for Renfro. It's incomplete. He couldn't fight back to it. Lawrence knew that Bama had jumped offside. Yeah, Bama trying to disguise their blitz and ended up jumping. Good job by offside. Trevor Lawrence to wait. Defense, number 33. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You're right. He had that free play. He knew he had the free play. Waited as long as he could and tried to time it up to, to Hunter Renfro. It's the second time in two plays. It looked like he's pointed to his head. Think out there, guys. Right. Clemson trying to add to a 12-point lead before halftime. Remember, Alabama deferred. They get the ball to start the second half. Lawrence strike across the middle, and that's Justin Ross, number one player out of Alabama. Yeah. 
last year. Yeah, great high school player from the state of Alabama. Everybody thought he would stay and play for Alabama. Instead, goes to Clemson, fell in love with the culture, has had an amazing true freshman year. You got a true freshman throwing to a true freshman, making big plays in a national championship. Tigers back in the red zone again. Choice wrestled down by Quinn and Williams. That big bear of a defensive tackle making a play. Well, he went right through a double team by Clemson. Watch him with his athletic ability right here. You get two Clemson offensive linemen, and you better be careful leaving him. Bostinelli said, okay, I'm going to leave it there to Cervenka to be able to take that. You better stay on the big fella. Cervenka, the strongest player on the Clemson team, wasn't enough that time. Look at about a dude who squats 665, benches 515, and Quinnen Williams just overpowered him in that play. When Quinnen Williams leaves the field, Clemson has to get excited that 92 is on the sideline trying to catch his breath. The absence of Christian Miller, linebacker, the leader, has loomed large so far, I'd say, in the first half. But they, what they've done is Dylan Moses, who's right here, has basically been playing defensive end in certain situations like third downs just to give them another pass rusher on the opposite side of Jennings. Need 12 on this third down. Play clock at three. Lawrence has a man in the flat, but the pressure was too much and it's incomplete. Jennings got there in a hurry, couldn't get the ball to choice. That was a very similar blitz that Tua missed and he didn't even see it and that's where they ended up sacking him in that last sequence of plays. This time, Trevor Lawrence looks right, he feels it, sees it. He tries this time at least to get the ball dumped off to the back. Choice, and by the way, if he throws that accurately, Choice picks up the first down and maybe gets to the end zone. The Tigers stall in the red zone for the first time, so a 36-yard field goal attempt from Greg Hugel, the senior kicking in his third national championship game, 10 of 15 this season. And career field goal number 54. And the Tigers move at 61 yards quickly and add to the lead. A 15-point margin, 45 seconds before halftime. Goodyear providing aerial coverage and to celebrate the 64-year legacy in the sport. The College Football Hall of Fame down in Atlanta will induct the blimp as an honorary member of the 2019 class. Goodyear more driven. It's a first non-coach non player. Non-player. It's a huge honor. That was a big stop by Alabama. You know, they, they have 45 seconds left. They have three timeouts. Two has not been in sync. Let's see what Alabama decides to do. But if they give up a touchdown there, obviously it's a totally different deficit that they're dealing with potentially going in at halftime. So the defense steps up, only allows the field goal by Clemson. Largest deficit of the season. Bama has faced still a two-score game thanks to that stop there. What do you think Saban and Mike Loxley would like to do with the last 45 seconds? They have all yeah, three with timeouts. timeouts too, uh, you still have to have confidence. He's the guy who, who got you to this point. You got to be aggressive. You got to attack. At least try to get in the field goal range. And we'll begin at the 25. Well, Saturday, January 19th, NBA doubleheader action over on ABC. Thunder and the Sixers. NBA Saturday Special Edition, 3.30 Eastern. And in primetime, the Lakers and the Rockets in Houston. Both games also on the ESPN app. Remember, we've seen a theme of Brent Venables mixing up coverages, changing up looks, bringing blitzes late, showing one coverage before the snap. Jumping to another coverage after the snap, it's caused some problems. Does he continue to be aggressive or get a little bit more conservative here as a defense? Three-man rush, and it's off the hands of Damian Harris, and nothing going right for the tie. That's a sure-handed running back usually. And usually he holds on to this. The Clemson will give this up all day. It's in the middle of the field force Alabama to have to use a timeout. Jerry Judy covered by A.J. Terrell on the right side of the formation, top of your screen. Thompson again crowding the line. Could be just showing and then dropping, trying to affect the communication of the offensive line by Alabama. Yep. Bunga Baloa steps up, 
And has room to run. That's a test of that ankle. He's knocked down to the 31, and they'll have to spend the first of their three timeouts. Or will they? Or maybe not. Wow, okay. Maybe not. Maybe they're content. They're just going to say, that's enough. Now, the answer is that question. They will get the football to begin the second half, and Saban says, we're just going to go in down by 15 and try to regroup defensively. Down by 13 in last year's championship game before Tugavaloa came off the bench to rescue him. Now it's to his show, and he's got a 15-point margin to make up. Tigers defense, two interceptions, took one to the house. ETN, touchdown hat trick. And the favorites, the top seeds, find themselves in a 15-point hole. But history says these championship games have been decided in the fourth quarter. So stay tuned. Let's get Nick Saban's reaction with Maria. Coach, you've had to battle through mistakes on both sides of the ball. What's your greatest concern as you go in the locker room? Well, first of all, we're not doing a very good job of getting off the field on third down on defense. And we turned the ball over twice. All right, we had the ball on the half-yard line and get a penalty and take points off the board. So, you know, we've executed well enough on offense to score a lot of points, but we turned the ball over and shoot ourselves in the foot. But defensively, we're going to have to play a lot better all right, than what we're playing. Um, they're doing some things that we have, you know, copycat stuff that other people have done against us that we hadn't practiced against, so we're going to fix at halftime. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Let's send it over to Tom Rinaldi. Maria, thank you very much. A very strong half true freshman you said he doesn't play like a freshman anymore how do you assess how trevor lawrence has handled things well he's done a great job he's missed a couple throws you know we hit that back that's a touchdown right there on that last one but you know they've got a little pressure on him but you know we, we've scored every time but twice so we've, we've got we've made some plays we've got to get our run game going a little bit but uh defensively you know we've got the two big turnovers that's the difference right now but uh, we, we finally stopped the run a little bit. We've got to get in here. We've got to do a better job. We can't let them get comfortable running the ball. And they were way too comfortable in the first half. So we've got a long way to go, man. This is, a, this is Alabama. So we, we're, we're happy to have the lead. But, man, ain't, ain't nothing less important than the, lead, than the score at halftime. we got a long way to go. Sign in the office. Good luck. Yeah, right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, he's right. That's a Chris. mantra. Dabo's always generous with his comments going to break. And a lot to be excited about. The Tide controlling possession and stats, but that doesn't mean a lot. Tigers by 15 at the break. Stay tuned for Imagine Dragons and the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report right after these messages. This Halftime Report is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Team is back on the field for the second half. Welcome back to the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. Clemson Tigers drew first blood with a pick six by A.J. Terrell, and they have a 15-point lead to a tug of a low. A couple of interceptions also had a fumble that tied recovery, Kirk, but it's the largest halftime deficit ever for Bama under Nick Saban, and they've got to make the adjustments. We'll start with the defense. What do they got to do? Well, first of all, Nick Saban, is, he's known for his ability to make adjustments. You heard him talking when he walked off about the importance of being able to do that. Big thing they have to do, they've negated the running game. They've taken it away. They've been able to contain ETN for the most part. He's only at about 24 yards. Big thing they have to do is they've got to get after Trevor Lawrence. They don't have a twitchy pass rusher, so it's going to have to come from scheme. They're going to have to be able to bring Anthony Jennings, bring some linebackers. They've got to disrupt him, try to get him, confuse him, try to get him to throw the ball into coverage because right now they've not done a good job of getting pressure. Yeah, Christian Miller's absence, the hamstring injury from the Orange Bowl looming large. When they've run the ball, Kirk tied gaining about seven yards per carry. They'll get the football to begin the third quarter. And I, I think you got to go back to that. I mean, there's such a so much uh, more time left in this game. Long way to go. You don't need to just all of a sudden put more on Tua. Tua right now is still trying to settle into Brent Venable's scheme and how he's play, uh, attacking Alabama's offense. I think it's more about, hey, let's get back to running the ball. That big offensive line was doing a really good job. You mentioned they're almost averaging seven yards a carry. Then it's a combination of Tua and the running game. So Tua, at this point a year ago, was brought in cold with no meaningful snaps in his career and he was brilliant especially in the fourth quarter in overtime and he brings the tide back again Brent Venables defense they've given up 
266, but they've made some big plays by confusing the quarterback. Take a look at AT&T giving their best. They go back to this first half, and if you're just tuning in, 31-16 Clemson, and we've seen some rare miscues from Tua. Throwing interception, Alabama here had the ball almost inside the one-yard line, unable to get a touchdown. Here another interception because he's confused by the coverage. A late blitz caught him off guard instead of dumping it off to Najee Harris. So Brent Venables with a heck of a plan in getting ready for this game against Bama. First half goes to Venables in the defense, but still 30 minutes of football to go. Damian Harris breaks the tackle and barrels forward as they do stick with that productive running game. Quick first down. Yeah, absolutely. Clemson's going to blitz their linebackers. It's, it's a high-risk, high-reward type of approach. It worked out for them in many cases. But if Alabama can pick those blitzes up, there's a lot of room to run for these running backs. And it's a great way to start this second half for Mike Loxley and his Bama offense. Damian Harris again gets the edge and they are getting chunks of yardage as the tide and two plays have moved into Tiger territory. Uh, Clemson unable to set the edge, unable to get to the outside. Jonah Williams with clean furrow that time, unable to furl, unable to kind of get that right arm free to get upfield and prevent Damian Harris from getting around him. And just like that, a couple big plays, and that's 26 yards on the ground for Bama. They fake it to Harris. Tua pitches it far side. And catch is made by Smith. A flag is down. Back in the offensive pit. Jonah Williams was downfield. I don't know if they caught him. He was almost eight or ten yards downfield. A little bit of John. Christian Wilkins pointing An across at the Bama offensive line. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Yeah. Repeat first down. Good call. Williams, one of the six Californians on the roster from the northern part of the state in Folsom. Anytime you see a lineman getting downfield, it, it tells you again that they're trying to run the ball with that run pass option. The defense gave him the throw look, so he pulled it out and tried to throw it. I thought it was a false start penalty down near the goal line. They really began to turn momentum against Alabama. Had to settle for three. And it was a turning point. So on first and 15, Tua rolls and flips it short. Smith again, stutter steps, dodges a tackler. It's not a regular tight end. He's very athletic and good in space. Yeah, you see what happens when you start running the football? You give him this look, and this defense starts flying, and then Tua is able to pull it and go the other way. Watch the white jerseys flying to go get Damian Harris. Nice and easy. He's able to throw in rhythm. Good play call. Looking to throw again. Can he escape? Just fires it into the turf. Tigers looking for intentional grounding as Wilkins was pressuring the quarterback along with Austin Bryant. It's that, getting a little salty down there. That's the beauty of having four that can rush the quarterback. You don't need to always blitz. Christian Wilkins in the middle, 42. You can see Austin Bryant, who's able to get by his man. He goes down, but Wilkins doesn't give up on the play. And because they rush four, they had seven back in coverage playing zone nowhere for Tua to go with the ball so that was a coverage sack as much as anything once again Jacobs in the Wildcat formation they need less than a yard on third down particularly they got two plays to get it right he's already shown Saban he's going to gamble with four to fourth down in their own end the spot's going to be real close to the marker at the 39 now they've Wow. Spot of the ball, a little bit short. Yeah, it sure looks like it. So if he went for it in the first half in his own end, bigger deficit now. He comes in territory, figure this is an easy decision. Oh, sure. But does he keep Jacobs in there with the predictable Wildcat runs? Keep in mind, when you have a Christian Wilkins in the middle of that defense, and you've got linebackers blitzing, it's not an automatic, even if this ends up being short of the first down. Christian Wilkins, winner of the Campbell Trophy, top scholar athlete in the country. He's at a 3.0 in every semester of his college career. 
just enjoying his final game as a Tiger out there. They're about three inches short. Diverted twice already on fourth down. Wilkins, Dabo Sweeney talking about the leadership on this team. It's not one or two guys. He said it's an entire group of players this year that's helped keep this Kemp Clemson team focused. But th without a doubt, Wilkins is kind of at the front of that leadership. Big moment early in the second half here. Fourth and inches. Jacobs is in Wildcat formation. Smith and Damian Harris in the backfield. Straight ahead. After a little bit of a dance, that's just strength. It was second effort as he gets through the tackle of Skalski, and it's a first down. When Christian Wilkins almost got through there, it looked like you would think he would go here, but instead he tries to fool him and shoot the other gap and almost got the penetration. You see he got his right arm in there. That's a great look. It's a great look and a great effort by Josh Jacobs, who is met right at the line of scrimmage, and I think that extra effort got him the first down. Not easy to escape the grasp of Wilkins, who's strong and also very quick. Tungabailoa has to avoid pressure and delivers off the hands of Smith there. He got near the quarterback that time. And that offensive line's having a hard time with this pass rush. Clay Furl gets in there with a twist, makes Tua have to step up, but he still gets the ball thrown accurately. The ball had a lot on it. Devontae Smith, ball went right through his hands. That's a first down. That's second easy drop by a tied receiver. Damian Harris had one in the first half. Four receiver look. And a handoff to Harris, who builds momentum very quickly and runs downhill for nine. Running, continue to go back to that running, running game and mixing in the backs. Damian Harris, Josh Jacobs. We've seen Najee Harris. They're trying to, we keep talking about how Clemson's offense wants to wear down Alabama's defense. The same could be said in this kind of game with Alabama's offense and, and what they're trying to do. If you look at time of possession, a huge advantage right now for Alabama. Two us split out wide left again and Jacobs one more time on third and one in Wildcat formation. Did he run a wrinkle off this or just straight run? Now it's predictable, but it's very hard to stop as Jacobs moves the change to the 26. And you know it's coming and you can't stop it. I mean, he, he is really dangerous as a as a runner taking that direct snap. Think about Damian Harris is a rarity these days. He's an elite senior running back and a couple of thousand yard seasons as a sophomore and a junior. Stats down a little bit this year. Looking to throw in first down. Pressure picked up. And Smith underneath tackled immediately after the catch by Mullen. Boy, two is feeling that pressure. I mean, he's doing a good job of keeping his eyes downfield. But, but on that last throw, he's falling backwards because of the blitz by Kendall Joseph. So even when they're not getting to him, he's still not in rhythm. He's still falling back and throwing away from his throw. Second and six. Has time this time. It's one of those crossing routes. They're tough to stop. Smith made the catch. They've ruled it a fumble. He recovers it. It's Terrell, who's limping off, who made the tackle. Let's take another look and see if he was down. Yeah, bang, bang play here. It's just a matter of was he bobbling it before he went down. Well, you see the right knee. I mean, that, that, that's almost simultaneous there. The ball coming out when that right knee touched. Right knee, oh, boy, I don't, they're going to have to take, they're definitely going to have to stop this and take a peek. Makes a difference just a couple of yards. It is a third down play, and again, Mullen not in the game. Looks like that Big Ten crew did buzz down the to take a look. The previous play was the runner fumbled the ball before he was down. The play is under further review. So Mullen, who had the pick earlier, being looked at. Now, an exclusive look at Marvel Studios' Captain Marvel in theaters everywhere on March 8th. Fifth year for the college football playoff national championship trophy, which replaced the old crystal ball. 
Well, he's about 50 pounds. And the Tigers trying to wrestle control at the top back from Alabama. They did review that play while we were gone, confirmed that it was a fumble. So they, Bama ends up losing about three yards now to try to convert. Well, you got to think it's four down territory, but it does push him back three yards. Tied three for eight so far in third down. Damian Harris is the back. Tua looking to throw. Stands and fires across the middle, broken up nicely by Mark Fields. Bama fans down at this end, screaming about a flag. There isn't one, and it's fourth down. Well, Fields is undersized at 5'10", going up against Irv Smith at 6'4". There was a, some contact late. Let's see if he gets in and affects him with that. Yeah, you know, I don't know if that was necessarily, it looked a lot worse than it really was. That right arm started to come around, but ultimately did not do enough, I think, to uh, make the official think that was interference. As Ooh, I don't know, Coach. I'm, we're, 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 where has this split decision appear on that one? All right, yeah. <laughs> the officials agree I'm with always you. for the receiver, but I didn't think he grabbed that shoulder. I thought he placed his hand on it, but I don't think he grabbed it. Clemson alert for a fake. Bolivis from 40 yards, and it is a fake. And taking off is Mac Jones, the backup quarterback, and it's snuffed out. Niles Pinkney made the stop. And the Tigers were thinking what we were thinking. It didn't feel right a field goal attempts. That, that was fourth down and a long way to go. Six. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that had no chance of making it. I'm surprised if Jones is thinking of fake it. I thought he would throw the ball. They had no chance. Clemson ready for it, but yeah. Jones not the fastest runner. Picker is the lead blocker. Didn't work at all. The college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T is brought to you by Taco Bell's new Cravings value menu. Value beyond belief. And new NyQuil Severe with Vicks VapoCool. Vaporize your cold. Uh, Saban's pursuit of national title number seven. Sixth at Bama in danger. Clemson takes over after that ineffective fake field goal. Goodyear providing aerial coverage. College Football Hall of Fame proud to announce the Goodyear Blimp as an honorary member of the 2019 class. Goodyear more driven. Tigers certainly not fooled, and the design of that fake field goal was, was funky, Kirk. No, not at all. Very, very surprised that Nick Saban in Alabama went with a fake field goal. I mean, it was four down territory. Just keep your offense out there and try to execute. At the fumble, you pointed out the three yard loss, and Smith, he got it back, but he made it a tough third down. And Alabama wastes a 13 play, 51 yard drive. Lawrence dropped for a loss by Jennings. Here we go back. Watch the, watch the kicker. You see the, the holder kind of gives the head nod as if they we're going to do this. They, they must have seen the look that they wanted from the sideline and they yelled out to Jones, go ahead and run it. But Clemson sitting there waiting for that. That play never, again, never had a shot. Again, Jones is the third string quarterback, but using a kicker as a lead blocker into the teeth of that front. And now, short completion. Catching the ball is Amari Rogers, third and long now. This is where, when you're a championship team, the offense and Tua not quite hitting on all cylinders because of the way Clemson's defending them. This is where Nick Saban, he likes to rely on his defense. The ball's at the Alabama side of this stadium. This defense needs to make a play. They need to try, try to provide a spark for this Alabama team. Tide crowd of this end making some noise. And backpedaling Lawrence flips it open. Wide open. Justin Ross off and running. The Alabama native wins the foot race. And Clemson strengthens its grip on this championship game. Seventy four yards. Well, the reason Ross is open here on this third down is Savion Smith went down at the line of scrimmage. He he jammed him at the line of scrimmage. Justin Ross pushed him. Savion Smith went down, and you can see he's still down. Hopefully he's okay, but there he is. He's jammed up close, gives him a push, and then goes down, loses his footing. And then after this, 
I, the, the move and the yards after the catch by Justin Ross against the safety, Deontay Thompson. Boy, that's a true freshman making that move in the open field. The offensive line doing just enough to keep Quentin Williams and Anthony Jennings out to give Trevor Lawrence a chance to make that throw. Trevor was stumbling, but he wanted to turn his head quickly because he knew he had a big play. Nothing going right for Saban's defense. So before the PAT, they continue to look at Savion Smith, who is down. Comes his longest pass play of the season. The lead is 21. Alabama corner Savion Smith who stumble created career sailing for Ross carted off as Hugel's on for another PAT to try to stretch this to a 22 point margin Bama used five minutes at the start of this half and came up empty after the 13 play drive and Lawrence strikes quickly to build the lead serious urgency now for Tua and the Tide Clemson's last four possessions Kirk touchdown touchdown field goal touchdown and they scored five of their last six possessions That's what a difference a year makes uh -oh. another doink dueling missed PATs except Hugel is reliable just the second one he's missed this season let's go back to the touchdown with Savion Smith falling at the line of scrimmage far right third down and you have a freshman wide receiver Savion Smith right at the line you know he's trying to jam Goes down. We don't know what the injury is, but right there, Deontay Thompson's got to be able to make that play and give Clemson a first down, but not this. He slips, loses his footing, and that gives you an idea what kind of speed Justin Ross has. It's 6'4", 210, gets off of that press coverage, makes the catch. Trevor Lawrence looking at him the whole way. He knew he was going to go to Ross. He ended up seeing him wide open, and Ross does the rest after the catch. Lawrence. Pretty calm reaction. 23 unanswered points for Clemson. They missed the PAT. It's a doink for each kicker after the double doink that decided the Eagles that? Bears playoff game yesterday. You try that a hundred times, you, you couldn't do that. Justin Ross showing why his mom and his high school coach flatly refused to allow him to quit football. He wouldn't have any fun. He was a freshman playing with a varsity because he's that good. But his buddies were on the JV and he wanted to quit every single day. Mom took away the cell phone. His coach just locked him in the office, put his arms across his chest, said, son, you got a special gift. You are not going to quit football. You're going to make a name for yourself in this sport. And he has in his freshman season. Jacobs out near the 30 as we check in with Tom Rinaldi. Chris, the message from Dabo Sweeney in the locker room was twofold. We need to stop the run. That will be the key to controlling things here in this second half. But more importantly, the score is 0 0. It's something that he said during the last injury timeout as well, imploring his team to play with the same aggression, the same attitude, and treat this game as if it has just started on the scoreboard, even though they're a quarter and a half away, Chris, from winning. Well, Tom, they're leading 6 0 in the second half. Two back look. Can they stick with the running game, which has been productive? Or now, well, there's your answer, Kurt. They hand it off to Najee Harris. And gets 11 more. But the deficit is now 21. Yeah, and, and obviously with eight and a half to go, a little under eight and a half to go here in the third quarter, this is not the time. This offense has played with a tremendous amount of confidence all year, and it's been a balanced attack. You can't just abort the running game and just start throwing it all over the place, especially against Clemson's defensive line and their pass rush. Tied of running for 157. Tigers just 25. Jacobs in motion to a look that way now fires down the middle and it's caught by Smith inside the 40 great job by Tua Moving the safety with his eyes watch him move the safety in the middle of the field Right back in the middle he moves him by looking to the right opens up the middle of the field By using his eyes to, to kind of play with Wallace the safety number 12 moved him just enough to come back and make that throw to Devontae Smith. Who has been the top target tonight for Tua. Six catches. Najee Harris tried to bounce it, just ran into traffic, and Tanner Muse knocked him down along with Wilkins. That was a much better job 
by Clemson. Not giving him anywhere to be able to find that crease. Christian Wilkins is having a big night, and I think right now really starting to feel that this team, this defensive line came back for this moment. They wanted to come back and have a chance to win a national championship, and up by 21, Christian Wilkins right now is feeling it. Second and 11, Tunga Bailoa rolls away from the pressure and fires. Beautiful catch, adjustment by Jacobs in there down in the red zone. Wow. One on one, scramble drill. Tua finds Josh Jacobs with Trey Lamar, who's 255 pounds as a linebacker, never got his head turned to find the ball. Good job of improvising by Tua and a heads up play by Josh Jacobs to take off seeing the one-on-one -on -one matchup that he had with the bigger linebacker, Lamar. Tremendous multi-purpose back. That's why you think he's headed for success on Sundays, big time. Got 16 that time. They fake it to him, slant. They're all over it. Jalen Waddle, a speedy guy, corralled quickly by Wallace. Very surprised that Tua has not taken shots with his receivers against the corners. They've been doing most of their work in the middle. Very little success trying to go after the corners of Clemson. And Clemson has very long athletic corners, but because Alabama's had so many games where that's been a home run for them, even last week against Oklahoma, they've not had any success yet tonight. Play action across the middle. It's too high and off the hand of Henry Ruggs. Trayvon Mullen, corner who we saw hobbled earlier in this uh, half here, not on the field right now, Kirk. Yeah, he, he had this. Just misses the touchdown to Ruggs. And with double slants, if he would have paused just a second and seen Waddle behind him, he would have easily had a touchdown. Get another third down play. They need four. Clemson's going to call a timeout. Second time tonight. The Tigers have spent the timeout on defense, but this is a crucial, crucial sequence for Alabama. Urgency. Two plays to get four yards when you come back. Think of Aloha and the tight offense down by three scores. They need four yards. Very, very unlikely they would try a field goal or fake it again. No, obviously they, they need a touchdown. They've got two plays here to pick up this first down. Trayvon Mullen trying to hydrate, trying to deal with cramps on the sideline. Put into our Tom Rinaldi. He's not in the game. Jacobs is the back. Three receiver look. And Tunga Bailoa fires far side. Inaccurate throw. Judy claiming he was held out of the break by Terrell. No flag. And now another crucial fourth down. Yeah, it was early in the round. I think he grabbed a hold of him. Watch eight right there. Grabs the jersey. Without a doubt, both hands. Grabbed the jersey in the front. Grabbed the jersey in the back. Right in front of Nick Saban in Alabama. Could not believe that a couple of those officials right in front of them didn't see it. Should be a first down for Alabama. Instead, the humongous play midway third. There's three or four so far on fourth down. Big field goal counts in that. Tua, they pick up the blitz. Can he scramble for it? Got a ways to go. Makes a cut. Shows the toughness. The spot will decide it. Maybe just short. The Tigers have held as Tunga Bailoa tried to weave his way through heavy traffic, and Tanner Muse stopped him. Well, this time, Alabama picked up the blitz, but he is going to be short. Good coverage downfield. He's going to try to, as you said, Chris, that second, third effort, effort trying to reach, but a big hit by Tanner Muse right at the end prevents him from being able to reach out and make that first down. Terrell Clint came on the blitz, picked up by Josh Jacobs, but nobody to throw the ball to. And again, you've got to give Brent Venables and this Clemson defense a lot of credit for dialing up the right pressures at the right time. Talked to Muse the other day. He's a safety that loves the run support Phil. In coverage, he's not the greatest guy. He knows that, but that kind of play, stepping up, making a big hit in the quarterback. You get your offense, the football back in a championship game, huge. So both Bama drives in the second half, Kirk, turnover on downs. Yeah. Last two times, Alabama's had the ball deep into Clemson territory. 
obviously down like this. They're thinking about coming up with a touchdown. See the corner blitz from the left. Josh Jacobs picks him up. Christian Wilkins being able to penetrate two offensive linemen. Forces Tua out of the pocket. And because they're sitting back in zone with those safeties, able to come down and keep Tua short of the first. They've used more than eight minutes of clock time on those two empty drives. And now Lawrence working the sideline and throw and make, coming back to make the catch is DeAndre Overton first down. Perfectly thrown ball. Trevor Lawrence to the far left there. Last week, what hurt Alabama late in that game against Oklahoma and Kyler Murray with CeeDee Lamb? That back shoulder fade against Sertan. They looked at that film and they went right after him there to pick up that first down. ETN swarmed early by Jennings and they clean it up. Raquan Davis makes the tackle. If we know Dabo Sweeney and Tony Elliott, Jeff Scott, they're aggressive. They're going to stay aggressive with the lead. Can't expect them to throttle way back here. No, no I don't think they, they will. They have too much respect for Alabama and what Alabama can do. Tony Elliott right there in the middle, the co-offensive coordinator. How about that location of that back shoulder fade by Trevor Lawrence? Throws that ball well before Overton was expecting the ball where Sertan could not make a play on it. Trevor a little hyped up early, some incompletions. Dabo pointed out that he missed a couple passes, but he's created some big, big plays through the air tonight. Misses Ross that time. That's 15 years. Two guys who have been number one rated prospect in Bama have left the state. Jameis Winston and Ross. They don't get away often. What a difference a year makes in the Clemson passing game. Remember this game last year? Sure. Clemson couldn't throw the ball at all. I think they threw for about 124 yards last year. Nothing downfield at all. Nothing downfield. Sacked five times. They couldn't get the ball downfield. What a different story this year. Third and 13. Lawrence just launches. Freshman versus freshman. And Ross makes a catch on the far sideline. A brilliant juggling catch as he beat Josh Job. How about the touch on this throw? Going up against Job, who's an incredibly talented true freshman, hasn't played a lot of ball, pretty good coverage, but the location of the ball up and over the shoulder of Job, and there's the focus by the freshman Ross to haul that in for a big play for the Clemson offense. Got 37 on that third and long. Just Look talk, out. Just talked about their vertical passing game, having it this year, missing it last year, the difference in this offense. It's Renfro in motion. A handoff instead up the middle to Adam Choice. See where Lawrence has distributed the football to pass chart. It's a lot to look at, Kirk, but take us through this. Yeah, I mean, so far he's 16 and 26, 324 yards. But what I want to talk about, the difference is this year, one of three, two of two, four of five. He has five pass completions tonight of 25 yards or longer in this game. Has not been sacked. They haven't pressured him. And when you have to respect that aspect of the game, it opens up obviously the short passing game and and also a running game if you need it Ross again and tied the ball comes out and they ruin a fumble and the tide of taking it away Isaiah Bugs and Raekwon Davis were there. They'll take another look Davis had the football It's a matter did the ground cause that fumble Alabama hoping for a break here He extended himself and I don't know if the ball came out before, but I thought the ground may have caused it. He's trying to work. Watch the ball. Yeah, I think I think I think he's I think he's down. Yeah, his hip hit the ground as the ball hit the ground. Just a Ruling split second before, right the there. By the yeah, he's down. The Bring in Dave Kataya, just for confirmation, Dave, of what we're seeing as they review it. I'm seeing what you guys see. You see that knee down before the ball comes out. Even though the arm hits, the ball comes out after the arm. In both cases, he's down. Alabama fans just bemoaning the fact that Ross got away. There's been so much turnover in the Crimson Tide staff in you know, the last five years. 20 different coaches. Clemson, three coaches have left in that same time. And that continuity in the staff and the lack of it for Saban is a problem. You talk to Ross. He was very interested in going to the tie, but the position coaches have come and gone. He didn't feel like he could feel confident that the coaches would be there. 
Yeah, and, and I think also to credit Clemson, I think when he went on his visit, he felt something a little bit different there. Right. I, think it, I think it surprised him, and I think he was, once he got on that campus and, and felt that culture, I think he was really intrigued by what Clemson has to offer. And I think at that point, it was, it was obvious he wanted to go to Clemson. You know, there's only been a couple players from the state of Alabama that are considered the best players that, to leave that state, Jameis Winston being one of them and, and Justin Ross. If we expect replay to reverse that call of a lost fumble, to be about a third and eight at the 36 for Clemson. Nick Saban talked about how they got to play better third down defense when he walked off the field, telling Maria Taylor we got to be better. That Clemson six of nine on third down. After review, the runner was down before he lost control of the ball. Will be. Third down and nine at the 37-yard line. Clock will start. I'm not ready for play. So the Tigers converting Kirk double the percentage of other Alabama opponents this year on third down. You go more than 21 down. I, I know you got two. You got all those weapons. Can they get after Trevor Lawrence? Can they? Can they affect him? Something that's been a problem here on third down without Christian Miller. Keep talking about how Dylan Moses, you'll see him on the right side of the defense lined up, trying to help, trying to get a pass rush in. Yeah, 45 sacks on the season for the Tide, zero tonight. They bring five. Lawrence picks up the blitz, delivers, and is in another circus catch by Ross. Wow! Humongous play by the freshman. Well, a great throw and an unbelievable right-handed catch. Are you kidding me? A palm and then he gets the right foot down. That's as good of a catch as you're going to see. By the way, Trevor Lawrence makes that play on third down, throws it, and just hopes it's going to be good enough for Ross to have a chance. He got leveled as soon as he threw that ball. That's big time. Saban jogs down and makes a case to the officials, and Bama will spend a timeout on defense. Last thing you want to do, 21 down, is burn a timeout on defense, but he's, he's got to get his guys regrouped. No question about it. I want to go back to a great catch, but I love to see a young quarterback. Look at his eyes. He's, he knows where he's going to go. Watch how he keeps his eyes downfield. Here comes Bugs. Boom. Moses coming in. Soon as he threw that ball, he felt 300 pounds closing in on him. Didn't affect him at all. Kept his eyes. Takes the hit and gives Ross a chance to make that play downfield. Justin Ross at 6'4", long arm. What's his catch rate? He's about 12 feet? Yeah. I mean, that, that was beautiful. Up in the air, right hand, right foot. And a kid who's 19 years old, was in high school a year ago, is taking Alabama's defense to school and smiling about it on the sidelines. Look, there's work to be done. It takes a lot to finish off the tie, but... Bama's two possessions in the third quarter have produced some yards, but no points. Two stops on downs. And Clemson, if they get this to 28, I know two is good, but it, it's deep trouble. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a catch. First down, Clemson. There was no doubt about that. Ross said, I had that all the way. You leave the state, Kirk, and you get to hear from the folks back up. Justin says there's people in his family rooting for Alabama tonight. Not immediate family, but extended family. How about, how about six receptions on the 153 yards and a touchdown for the freshman? You got bragging rights when you go home off a performance like this if the Tigers can finish the job. Black running again. ETN. Gets a block and makes a cut down right near the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal, Clemson. You, know, you, you think about uh, your, your defender, and Lawrence is back there throwing the ball. He's, he's 342 yards, throwing, throwing, throwing. And just when you start to get caught up and trying to get a pass rush, here comes Travis Etienne around the corner to keep you honest for some quick yards and a first down. Haven't done much with the running game. It's just been just a change of pace. Feaster in on first and goal. And they feed Feaster. He knocked down at the five. Etienne twisting his ankle at the end of that last run. 
Walked slowly to the sidelines. Yeah, his left ankle as he planted it. And it looked painful. Travis has run for two, caught a touchdown pass tonight. Look at conference record of that touchdown total. It's Feaster to the right of Lawrence. And quarterback faked the pop pass, kept it, and got smacked by Moses. A lot going on there. The jet sweep, faking that, faking the, the pitch, and then keeping it. And Alabama staying home. Quinn and Williams staying home, leading the way there. Not giving up here. Still trying to fight here as the closing seconds to this third quarter. They've used almost five minutes of clock. They've moved it 84 yards in 11 plays. An effective drive even if they can't find the end zone. Third and goal. Lawrence with the rush coming finds T Higgins touchdown there is a flag down late hit after the touchdown this should stand that kid cannot be 19 years old come on <laughs> I mean it looks like a 10-year NFL veteran I mean he looks like he's been there his whole life back there taking hits making throws and how about these receivers I mean, Ross has made some at that time. It's T. Higgins going up and making a play. How about the circus catches this crew has made? If you go back to the Cotton Bowl against Notre Dame, great catch by Higgins in the end zone. Here's Mike Cannon with the explanation. It is a touchdown. And a personal foul late hit after the score. And we'll, we'll go back and take a peek at this, but what made it really stand out really stand out was that they went over the top of Mac Wilson and that, that's what's the, that's why the ball was a little bit high and Higgins had to go up and climb the ladder to make that play this duel between young quarterback prodigies controlled by Trevor Lawrence who checked out that touchdown pass and the catch and the jump up round just said wow 347 yards and three touchdowns for the true freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. No throttling back in the third quarter. They've added 13 points to the lead. The route's going to come from your right, and he's going to work towards the back, but I want you to watch Mac Wilson in the middle. They're playing straight up man. Mac Wilson's freelancing. Trevor Lawrence has to make this throw over top of Mac Wilson because of Anthony Jennings coming in. He waited as long as he could until he makes that throw. Higgins on the outside works across from the freshman, Job, and extends himself. It's 6-4 to go up and make that play, and that's where the personal foul came in from Job after the catch. Look at this throw over top of Mac Wilson, right into the fingertips of T. Higgins. Another look for the AT&T pylon cam. Just make plays. Have fun. Dambo Sweeney's message was pretty simple. And make history, as the Lawrence family <laughs> loves it. Oh, it's awesome. And Nick Saban's defense is being eviscerated. Keep in mind, I mean, again, we keep saying that Trevor Lawrence is a true freshman. He's playing two more years of college football. Can you imagine what he'll look like in two years? <laughs> Mentally imagine, and physically. I can't imagine what the other folks in the ACC and around this sport are thinking with the idea of, of him. And by the way, most of those receivers back, too. You got freshmen and sophomores, top two quarterbacks. Top two running backs, three of the top four wide receivers. They'll lose, of course, Renfro and Trevion Thompson. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> There's people that were frustrated about Alabama and Clemson. You know, these, these teams aren't going anywhere. Clemson's right there right now with Alabama in these last four years. That's a full fourth quarter to come. But a four touchdown deficit touchback after the penalty moved the kickoff up near midfield. Our first UFC fight night card on ESPN Plus coming up Saturday, January 19th.
Main event bout, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific, Bantamweight champ, DJ Dillashaw, moving down in weights. Henry Cejudo is the opponent. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app. There's 21 seconds and then a quarter to go. What can Tua do to begin to chip away at this lead? Two touchdowns and also those two interceptions that were cast in by the Tigers. It's a deep shot for Smith. And he's well guarded and that was overthrown. Miles Pinckney, another backup defensive lineman, pressured him. And Tua got hit there after he threw that ball. As soon as he let go of it, Miles Pinckney hit him and buried him into the ground. Tua got up from it, but it was probably the biggest hit he's taken all night. Remember Dexter Lawrence out, Albert Huggins, Niles Pinckney rotating in that defensive tackle spot opposite of Christian Wilkins. And it's batted down at the line. Kendall Joseph was there. Muse may have gotten the hand up. It'll be third and ten. I think everybody may be visiting Brent Venables from the SEC in the offseason asking him about how do you stop Tua? Because the players are making plays, but I'm going to tell you, they're in position to make plays thanks to this plan that Brent Venables has put together. He's, he's waiting until the last second on a lot of his blitzes. He's mixing up coverages. He's making two. I've never seen it all year where he's uncomfortable the entire game like this. There may be a series or two, but not an entire game. Bungabaloa has time and now is flushed on third and ten. And takes a shot for Judy downfield who's got it somehow to let the top receiver get behind him. Terrell makes the tackle on the final play of the third quarter. Yeah, that's just two of making a play and improvising, buying enough time, and Jerry Judy not giving up on the play. Four, who's right there. Good coverage by Clemson. You can see he was open there, but two is looking to the other side. And this is where he starts to scramble. Judy read the eyes. Tua kind of gave him the look like, keep going. And he eventually makes the play. Final quarter coming up. 30 unanswered points by Clemson. The college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T on ESPN. Welcome back for the fourth quarter. College football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Clemson Tigers have 15 minutes to protect a four touchdown lead to secure their second national title in the last three years. After a 48 yard play to end the third quarter. Can the Tide chip away quickly here in the fourth? Bungavaloa steps up, tries to get it to Smith and it's broken up by Terrell who began this night, or excuse me, Fields. He's, he says, Going to sleep. Going to sleep over yeah. there? By the way, he, he has stepped in admirably to come up and make some plays. That ball's caught until Fields gets his right hand in to knock that ball away. He stepped in for Terrell and is playing incredibly well. And Trayvon Mullen over there with a cramp, two jumping into the fray. He's a senior in his last go around, part of this decorated and accomplished senior class. No pressure this time. And a long delivery on the sidelines to Waddle, who's muscled out, but it's first and goal. Actually, a little mix up. One of the few mistakes we've seen from Clemson. Watch this on coverage. Couple guys take Devontae Smith to a recognize it right at the line of scrimmage. Just waited until there was separation from Waddle where he got out and be able to pick up some big yards. Alabama needs a little bit of urgency, not just trying to get a touchdown, but they need to move a little bit quicker. No doubt. They cannot afford to spend time even as they try to cut into this four touchdown lead. Monte Smith wanted Waddle away from him. Great one on one chance. Harris out of the backfield makes the grab, turns the corner, can't quite tightrope inside the pylon. Xavier Thomas. Big defensive end was in coverage. They'll spot the ball at the one. And Damian Harris trying to extend the ball, stay in bounds. He's just pushed, just barely out of bounds here as he tried to extend it by Thomas. At least he did go out of bounds to stop the clock for a, for a moment. 
three tight ends for the Tide. Matt Womack in as a bonus offensive lineman. It has not been easy down here against the Tigers tonight. Damian Harris fighting, but not getting there. Boy, Kendall Joseph filled that hole beautifully. The middle linebacker, that's what you're supposed to do down at near the goal line. 34. Everybody else has a hat on a hat. 34 right there, able to make that play against a physical runner in Damian Harris. And the best part about that for Clemson is that clock keeps churning. That battle of 34 is won by the guy in the white jersey. Your power formation. The tight end Smith lined up at fullback. Damian Harris knocked down. Great penetration by Christian Wilkins. Nothing coming easy. Oh, they are not giving up an inch. You want to see why Christian Wilkins is an All-American? Watch how quick he is and watch the awareness to know where this ball is. He's fighting through that right guard, Leatherwood, and comes up in submarines. Damian Harris, he didn't even know what hit him. These guys have waited to get to this moment. After losing to Alabama last year, all of them wanted to come back for a chance at Alabama and a chance to win a national title. It's just about ball game if they can keep the tide out of the end zone. Fourth down, down four scores. Tonga Baloa trying to run, ain't gonna get there. Chase down by Cleveland Farrell. And the Tigers begin to celebrate. Hey man, how about that defense? How about that Clemson defense? Stepping up again when Alabama has had the ball down into that red zone area, unable to come away with any points. It's the fourth time inside the red zone, only one touchdown for Alabama. It has been a total team performance. Young quarterback, playmaking wide receivers, and nasty defense keeping the tide out of the end zone again. Clemson takes over, 12-17 away from another championship. Something you have never seen. Nick Saban's Alabama career, his Crimson Tide team being routed. 0 for 3 on fourth down. Interesting call. As the Tigers had to chew on some buck. Tua Tengabailoa and Mike Loxie electing a quarterback run there. Three turnovers on downs. The fake field goal didn't work at all. And that stout Tigers red zone defense doing its job. Yeah, playing with a lot of pride down in there, not giving up on, on any series. And Tua in this, this offense obviously frustrated. What a plan put together and the way they're executing on this Clemson defense tonight. Is that just evidence, Kirk, that Mike Loxie, he's trying, but he's sort of run out of answers down there. Yeah. He's in power formations. That was a three-receiver set and Tua running to the boundary. Yeah, yeah that, that was surprising to see that call. Got to throw it. Using almost all of the play clock, but throwing and Lawrence just slinging it. Why not? You're feeling it. Better get the ball to Darian Kendrick. It does stop the clock. Had a big hole there behind the corner in front of the safety. Just missed him. You said it earlier that, you know, Clemson is not going to stop being aggressive. And at this point, now a third down and long, it's deep inside their own territory. They also want to be smart. You expect to run here on third and long. <laughs> the way they believe in 16, you never know. You know. The Tide have not been able to anticipate what to expect from this offense tonight. Adam Choice in there to block, and they just fling it. Why not throw it to Justin Ross? He juggled that one. Joe was in coverage, incomplete, and the punt team comes out. Yeah, he, he had it. I mean, you wondered if they're going to throw it. They're going to take a chance and, and give him a give him a chance to play true freshman on true freshman ball is perfectly thrown and I think Job and his long arms got in there and pulled that ball away from Ross who had it. Yeah, he did pay attention to our buddy Steve Levy on the sidelines got run into by the receiver out of bounds there. And have your head on a swivel. You're going to sit ringside. But Waddle. Jalen Waddle. Tries to make a play special teams have played a big role in these previous games. Not so far tonight in a positive way. Spires moves around, tries to kick it away from Waddle. 
He's going to let it bounce three times, and he stumbled. Just had to get out of the way, and it will roll dead on Bama's side of the field with 11-12 to play in round four of this rivalry. Presented by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. And in part by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. And Dos Equis. Keep it interessante. Please enjoy Dos Equis responsibly. Interesting looks here in Santa Clara tonight, and the folks in orange are all smiles. For this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Tied. And the football back. They have not been able to score in the second half here. And after the first quarter, only a field goal is Jalen Hurts comes off the bench. He's to a finish. He took a quick look at that hand. Or is this just to let him catch his breath and give Jalen Hurts a chance to spark this team? Now, I think Jalen will more than likely finish it off. It's, it's been a rough night for Tua and the Alabama offense. Why not give Jalen Hurts, after everything he's been through, give him 11 minutes to play football here? Against Georgia, engineered two touchdown drives. That dramatic comeback after Tungvaloa was finally forced from the game. Had a touchdown pass, had a touchdown run to eventually win it. An incredible Hollywood-like script unfolding in the same building where he was pulled the halftime of last year's championship game. Yeah, I mean, he, the way he stepped up and played in that game against Georgia said a lot about his maturity and his approach and, and the way he delivered for his teammates. And he's going to be corralled by Wilkins and sacked back inside the 45. Yeah, that ball came out. Alabama got on top of it. But he's looking at remember this is an area that he's trying to grow look at look at Christian Wilkins by the way he's being held there's two Offensive linemen trying to keep him out You see the ball out Christian Wilkins by the way when you come back for a reason And, it, and it's a reality right in front of your eyes. You're not gonna let up whether you're down 40 or up 40 You're just gonna keep going and, and if you want to watch a guy watch 42 in the middle You're right though. I was the second Fumble by a tied quarterback that the offensive line recovered. Third and 14, low snap. Hurts scrambling for his life, turns and makes a throw. It's low and incomplete. Ruggs couldn't go down and get it. Terrell in coverage, fourth and 14. You know, we put a lot on Tua tonight, but I think you also have to put a lot on the offensive line. That was a bear look, meaning that they covered up the, no, the uh, center and the two guards. And Brent Venables has unloaded everything in his arsenal to try to confuse the Alabama offensive line and has done a great job of it. Again, as soon as Jalen Hurts gets the ball, he's running out of there because of the confusion up front. Venables in our meeting, Kirk, he compared the challenge to stop at Bama to those USC offenses back in 04, 05. He's with Oklahoma, and the Trojans gave him a long night that time. Much better result. Preventables tonight, would you say? <laughs> You're watching the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. 10.02 to play. Matt Clemson closing in on their third national championship in the poll era. Damo Sweeney can win his second title before his 50th birthday. And he'll join Saban as the only two active coaches with multiple championships. But the first title victory a couple of years ago, it was achieved in a narrow win, come from behind with one second to go. This is like a knockout in round four of this matchup. 10-0-2 to play. Tigers are pinned way back. Ball half yard line. ETN has only been tackled behind the line for 11 yards lost all season long. Lose out. Capital and rewarding performance, Kurt. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence has been on tonight. The true freshman, 19 to 31, making great reads, toughness, being able to be able to throw the, with accuracy over top of that corner in front of the safety. There's the toughness over top of Mac Wilson. A little bit of everything. Also, he's thrown 19 passes, eight. 
different receivers on those completions. At least two more years for this quarterback. At least two more years for Justin Ross, his top target tonight. ETN is a sophomore. Keeper. And he shows the toughness again. Just a late slide before McKinney got him. Yeah, Debo Sweeney's excited about this team, even though you're going to lose some great players on that defensive line. See the 19 of 31 mentioned how he's hit eight different wide receivers. He shows up as a ninth grader because Brandon Streeter and Jeff Scott begged Dabo to visit with him. And I said, I don't offer ninth graders. Please, coach, everybody's offering him. Take a meeting. And he talked to him, and he still wouldn't offer him a scholarship, would he? He doesn't yeah. do that. Jeff Scott said <laughs> he and Brandon Streeter are looking at each other in the room, like waiting for him to <laughs> offer. And he, he, he said, I'm not going to offer you today. And that, by the way, impressed Trevor Lawrence and his parents more than anything in the recruiting process. In this third and one, ETN's going to get it. Yeah, he, he felt very much at home. He said this week that faith is as important to him as anything. There you see his family. Football doesn't define him. His life's not going to be geared around a scoreboard. And I think he found a, a kindred spirit in Dabo Sweeney in that regard. Yeah, I, without a doubt. I think that's a big part of what he found. I keep talking about the culture at Clemson, and, and that's a big part of it. You know, Dabo Sweeney has really built his program in a very different way from many of the programs around the country. And I think players gravitate towards that. They want to be a part of it. You can have fun and win championships. It's a lot to offer. ETN bouncing around, pinballing, but can't escape heavy traffic. You know, Dabo Sweeney has a saying, serve their hearts, not their talents. And if, I think a lot of players, they, they really feel that. I mean, he's tough on them. He played for Gene Stallings. He pulled out a pretty good impression of Gene Stallings at our meeting the other day. But the he, Dabo won't give you a chance to coach. <laughs> yeah. I'll pay you $36,000 a year, right? <laughs> he makes a lot more than that now, but money was never the motivation for him. He just really loves being a teacher of the game. Yeah, but I mean, I, the reason I bring up that Gene Stallings is Gene Stallings was a tough coach. Played for Bear Bryant, was around Bear Bryant. But Dabo does it in his own way. He's tough, but he also loves on him. ETN out of the two-back look. Makes a cut. ETN in the clear. And finally, as they close in and run him out the entire territory, Dylan Moses saved the touchdown. Yeah, what great vision by ETN. Play is designed up the middle. He sees grass to the left, bounces outside. Boy, poor effort there by Isaiah Bugs. He's either tired or injured, but uh, inexcusable there. He just bounced right, walked right around Isaiah Bugs, and he was able to pick up huge yards into that secondary. Now, we have seen Alabama bully people for the decade. He's sensing a little capitulation in the Crimson Tide right now. Feaster knocked down. Dabo Sweeney was a walk-on wide receiver. Grew up in Alabama. He he's a, made a couple of catches. Excellent high-fiver. You can see the enthusiasm even as a young player. Watch this next one. Makes the catch. Takes a hit. Looking for somebody to high-five. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Then he was hired, as you said, by Sawings as his assistant. Saban offered him a job. When he first got to Alabama, this was not a Crimson Tide juggernaut. Dabo had to listen to great coach respectfully but would not be on this career path if he hadn't trusted his gut and say to Clemson I think it's worked out pretty well for him mm. TJ Chase gets a touch and there's a long history Frank Howard man who first built Clemson's program Danny Ford won a championship in 81, the only championship for the school before Sweeney arrived. You've got three assistants also, Alabama grads on the staff. I think it's time for people around the country, if you haven't yet respected that Paul, this Clemson Tiger program, as being the upper tier. These senior class are 55 and 4, two national championships. Made the playoffs every year. I mean, th this program has not only arrived, They've been around for a while. But especially it's been the last four years.
As Lawrence just shows more toughness. He's not backing down at all. They're up four scores, and the freshman's still in there colliding with defenders. Another first down. And Clemson's not letting up. Alabama, I think, defeated mentally, not just physically. And Trevor Lawrence is saying, if you're not going to tackle, I'll run right over top of you. Yeah. To me, when Clemson's program changed and went to a different level with 2012 when they played a good LSU team in a bowl game in a Peach Bowl and beat them on a last second field goal from that point on they've become a different program at a whole different level I think the next year they won the ACC championship giving the veteran backs a chance Adam Choice and Tavian Feaster are in the game the other side of this is that Alabama unthinkably has been crushed did you ever think you'd see a Nick Saban team Beaten down like this in a championship game. I don't think anybody watching right now Ever expects an Alabama team to lose 44 to 16 The knockout punch. I said at a break it almost remind gives you that feeling when when Mike Tyson lost to Buster Douglas in the way when he went down You just remembered it because you were so surprised you know, People thought Clemson could win tonight, but in a potential shootout in a close game not a blowout it's Will Sweeney, the coach's son, who came in motion. But Lawrence is just keeping the football. And he's still willing to take a beating to move the six yet again. Again, he, he's 6'6", 215. I mean, he, he, you better tackle him. And, and he's running with some confidence right now. So he's 20 of 32 for 346 There's yards. There's Kurt Call for the O-line. Yeah, absolutely. How about that? Mitch Hyatt, the senior, is 57 start. That's a Clemson record. Big bear hug from Gage Cervenka, who'll be the center next year. Going to have four senior offensive linemen and a very talented, who'll be a sophomore, Jackson Carmen. Those will be the guys in front of Lawrence and all those young playmakers next year. Love how he pulled them off, almost, as you said, give him a, give him a curtain call. And now Clemson's going to call a timeout and get as many reserves in as they can. The Tide faithful have headed for the exits. Clemson folks partying 245 away from a title. Ford post game show, two minutes and 45 seconds away, and what a scene. Big tough guy, Christian Wilkins, one of the rare northerners on this team, comes to Massachusetts, came back hoping for this moment. Well, that, that's what it's about right there, the emotions. You make a decision and pass on the NFL to come back and chase a dream with your with your brothers. That's what it's about when it's realized. Great to see Christian Wilkins in this 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 defense and this whole team climb that mountain and win it all. Curtain call for the whole offense as Chase Bryce is in to mop up. Renfro will wrap up his Clemson career. And the soft side of a big tough guy. And that is what it's all about. Hey, man, careers don't get any better than that. Four ACC titles, two national championships. The Campbell Award is the top scholar athlete had at least a 3.0 in every semester of his college career. By the way, cool that Chase Bryce gets a chance to finish this game off. Go back to that Syracuse game. We talked about the mayhem moment for Clemson. Cool for him to get some reps here in the national championship after what he did that day against Syracuse. Yeah, it was Lawrence who had been knocked from the game. They were behind, and it was that 94-yard drive, mostly done on the ground. ETN eventually scored, but Bryce had to deliver a fourth-down throw that you talked about earlier. And you do all the preparation so you can be ready when your moment arrives. And that's part of the football culture at Clemson as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. He stepped in that day, and not a whole lot of people knew much about him. And he stepped up and, and made those plays. You can see... Christian Wilkins, man. It, it's almost like a year's worth of emotion that he's letting out right now. The night is Clemson's, but the other side of the coin is Bama's collapse. Couldn't do anything after halftime as Clemson just added to the lead. This drive, by the way, began at the one-yard line. So where does Saban and the Tide go from here? Two, obviously, back again. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're going to use this as motivation going into the offseason and and it's a team that will come back with a lot of key pieces. I'm going to tell you, there are going to be a lot of teams that are going to study Brent Venable's scheme and what they did in the offseason and 
Not everybody has the talent that Clemson has, but you can come up with some of the, the, the scheme. Brent Venables should get a game ball. We're talking about all these players. Dabo deserves it, but boy, that defense came prepared and outplayed Alabama for 60 minutes. There's a reason why Venables makes more than $2 million a year. And he's showing you that tonight. One more first down. And this will end deep in tied territory with very likely a victory formation and a 55th win for this Clemson senior class. The Tigers reclaim their crown by crushing Alabama. Delirium on the Clemson side. Stunned. Bama players humbled tonight here in California. Bama shut out in the second half, and Clemson just eats up the last 10 minutes. Wow. Let's hear from Dabo Sweeney after national championship number two. To Tom Rinaldi. Chris, thank you very much. Dabo, there are a few coaches in any sport who show more joy than you do. How do you describe the joy of the moment? Well, that's, that's been my word all year, and, and I, I just tried to have been. In, I tried to be intentional with that. And um, for me personally, joy comes from focusing on Jesus, others, and yourself. And um, man, I mean, you know, very few people. There's so many great coaches that that are so deserving of a moment like this that never get the chance to experience it. And um, to get to do it once, and now to get to do it again. You know, I'm just, it's just a, it's a blessing, and, I, and I, it's just simply the grace of the good Lord to allow us to experience something like this, and I'm so happy for our team, our fans, our administration, our former players that love the ball, and, uh, and you know, there ain't never been a 15-0 team, and I know we're not supposed to be here, we're just little old Clemson, and I'm not supposed to be here, but we are, and I am. And I, how about them Tigers, man? I'm so proud of our guys, these seniors. We beat Notre Dame and Alabama. We left no doubt. And we walk off this field tonight as the first 15-0 team in college football history. And uh, all the credit, all the glory goes to the good Lord, number one. And number two, to these young people. When you get a young group of people that believe, are passionate, they love each other, they sacrifice, they're committed to to, to a, a singleness of purpose, you better look out. Great things can happen, and that's what you saw tonight. After four games, you made a decision. You chose Trevor Lawrence to become your quarterback. What did you see then that came true tonight, Dabo? Well, I mean, he, he was the best player, you know, and uh, and that's not a knock against Kelly Bryant. I love Kelly Bryant, and uh, what a great player he is. But, it, but my job is to, is to make decisions that put the team in the best possible uh, path to win. And uh, after four games, he was the best player. And so I think you saw that. And, and in fact, I think when I got here, Holly's first question to me when I got here was, you know, hey, what are you going to do to us? Never lost a game. And I said, well, I don't think Trevor has either. So uh, I'm just going to work on my guy here and see if we can walk off this field and keep our guy undefeated. And I'm just, you know, we bent a little, but we never broke. We punched back. You know, this guy, this group had to eye the tiger tonight, man. They, and, and listen, Alabama, <laughs> this, this is the most amazing champion ever, the University of Alabama, and what they've done, and Coach Saban. And for our guys to come out here tonight and perform like they did, you know, it's just our staff, we had an amazing plan, we had a great week. And uh, I felt like we had the better team. Uh, and I felt like that if we could get a couple of breaks, we could, we could, we could pull away. And uh, the, the couple of turnovers and the big plays, I said coming in yesterday to you guys, big plays and turnovers. You win those two things, you win 98% of the time. And, and uh, we won it in a big way tonight. You've been saying for a long time that Alabama has been driving the bus in yeah, this right. sport. They've been in bus hey. one, bus two, hey. bus three. Don't even You've go. Been... Listen, we drove the Roy bus all the way out here to wherever the heck California we are, all right, to play a football game in a beautiful stadium in a beautiful place. 
And uh, who's driving now? Proud members of the Roy bus. So for all them other teams out there on that bus, hey, listen, I hope that you get a little, a little hope from us and a little inspiration that, hey, if we can do it, anybody can do it. And that's, that's, I mean that. Listen, if a guy like me, I said this two years ago. I, I, I mean, you can't write a Hollywood script like this. Only God can do this. And that's a fact. And, and people may think I'm crazy or quacky or whatever, but only God can orchestrate this. You can't, no Hollywood producer can write it. But I'm just telling you, if I can do it, if these Clemson Tigers can do it, hey, anybody can do it if you have a belief in yourself and what you're doing and you surround yourself with a bunch of great young people that are passionate about winning. And tonight, we conquered a mountain that ain't ever been conquered. The flag's on the top. And, uh, man, I just, I can't wait to celebrate. I can't wait. Congratulations, Dabo. Do it with your team. Yeah, well man, done. Thank you. Thank you. God bless everybody. Holly Road. Holly Road. Right here. Well, well, Trevor, you're one of those guys who gets to show up in college and win a national championship, and that hasn't been done since 1985 that a freshman's been able to pull that off. How would you describe this moment? Oh, uh, it's amazing, you know, and it's, I mean, you see it out here, I mean, I know, but I get a lot of credit for stuff that, you know, I'm only like, not even half of it, so these, these, oh, my teammates, uh, these coaches did an unbelievable job, and I, I just love everyone. It's been a part of this journey, and uh, man, it's been it's been uh, it's been an awesome journey, and uh, you know it's just, it's really unbelievable. When you took over this team, I mean, there was a lot put on your shoulders. How have you managed the pressure and brought your team to this national championship state? Yeah, I mean, it kind of goes back to having good teammates, good coaches, just surround yourself with the right kind of people that'll that'll lift you up and, and, and help you, and uh, definitely just small groups and stuff like that, people to help me out, lift me up, and uh, you know, keep me level-headed too. I saw Christian Wilkins, and you said you saw him tearing up. Guys like that, the seniors that you helped arrive at this moment, what do you have to say to them? I mean, yeah, he, Christian, he, he's, he's special, and uh, you, don't, you don't come across guys like that a lot. And we have a lot of guys like that on our team, which is it's just amazing. The, the leadership we've had from these seniors has been, you know, I've never been a part of anything like it. So uh, really just so blessed and fortunate that this is my first year in college, and i got to be with these guys. There's never a time when you back down in this game. Alabama's defense came after you. We saw you running the ball. We saw you taking hits. What's given you the opportunity to have that much strength to be that powerful throughout the game? I mean, just, just going through the season, you know, just everyone's yelling together. We're all laying on the line for each other. And, you know, it makes it easier when everyone out there is giving 100% and, and they're laying their body on the line for you. And, uh, you know, it makes you want to go hard for sure. How many championships do you plan on winning here at Clemson? Uh, at, at least uh, probably, probably three more, hopefully. <laughs> All right, Trevor, enjoy this one. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, he's got at least two more seasons of college football. He said three. <laughs> Young freshman, very composed. The veterans, tearful. And the glory shared by both the young guys who made a lot of the plays and the old guys who came back and avenged last year's tough loss to Bama, including Christian Wilkins, who we have enjoyed watching Kirk in the last four years as much as anybody. Yeah, he's, he's the man. Happy he's able to climb that mountain and fulfill that dream. The Ford postgame show is coming up. We'll hear from more of the Tigers and have the presentation of the college football playoff national championship trophy to the Clemson Tigers. The Ford postgame is brought to you by the Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar.